ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a WOW podcast, obviously. Obviously. Two. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, here we are. Any second now, we're going to be here. Oh, then you'll be in trouble. Uh-oh. Okay, here it comes. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome to the podcast. To it is lovely to be here. A wow can, podcast. I wonder if obviously, we can be obviously. Obviously. Can we? I'm sure we can. Oh, how are goodness. you, everyone? Hi. Thank you for joining us live for this episode. Do you like how I kept the intro like super, super short and specific? You did. And, and so that when we rip this audio and we put it on all of the streaming platforms that we will share this uh, podcast on later, uh, it will sound very professional. I won't have to put like a, a pre-roll on it or anything it, like Exactly, that. exactly. Oh my like, gosh. Every no one was prepared for it to start immediately. Yeah, we started immediately. <laughs> and the reason we did that was so so that we can just like leave this video up and we don't have to have it editing. Exactly. You know, like processing for hours and hours afterwards. Exactly. Oh, it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be so good. So, you know, we don't have to cut the front off it uh, or the beginning off it later on. It's going to be great. It's going to yeah. be fantastic. Hello, everyone. Hi. Welcome. Oh, we have got some wow news to talk about today. But first of all, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, to all those who celebrate, happy Thanksgiving. Which is us, is yeah, everyone in this are, house. Are, yeah, exactly. We are going to be celebrating today. Uh, yeah, so I guess our American friends are watching from home, listening from home, if you're if you're out and about today. I, I um, hope that our American friends are in bed. I hope they I are. I hope our American friends are sleeping <laughs> and morning, having a lovely time. America I and hope. everyone else. I don't, um, I don't want them to be, you know, I want them to be watching the show eventually. But dudes, <laughs> exactly. you can watch the, the VOD. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Yeah, you, you can guys like chill. you watch you, your it's football. It's going to be on our we main channel <laughs> under the podcast section like it always is, like it always will be. I hope you're in bed, you know, and I hope you're getting your strength ready for what do you do on Thanksgiving? Abby? Like the game? Do you watch the game? I bet oh, the, your dad my, watches my dad game. watches a game. A dad, game? Yeah. He's dad like will a, watch a, specific, a game. Isn't he like a Steelers man? Yeah. Oh, Pittsburgh Steelers all the way. I mean, and where we're from, it's either Cleveland Browns or Pittsburgh Steelers, and like... Oh, the Browns suck, man. I'm all about the Steelers. Exactly. Go you learn. Steelers. You learn. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, so we do that. Uh, Dad puts on the game, uh, reclines on the floor and watches the TV. I love the way your dad watches TV. Your dad is even taller than me. Your dad's <laughs> yeah. like six foot, what, six or something? Like five, no, he's six, six four, four or five. Three. I don't know. He's, he seems like he's got a force of personality as well. Man's a tsunami. Yeah. But uh, the way he watches TV is he likes to sit in front of the sofa on the floor and use the the, the, the kind of like the, the sitting bit on the sofa as a recliner. Yeah, yeah. Which and he I basically, appreciate. or I mean, what his go-to would just be like, I think just because he's too big for our sofas, he would literally lay down on the floor just in front of the TV and like have a little pillow and just be like watching from the floor oh. in front of the TV. Um, yeah, so that's 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 classic. I, I have uh, Evie, watched Evie dad. football with your dad. You have. It's it's a uh, uh, it's a very silent experience. Yeah, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of focus. Yeah, a lot oh, of focus oh, on the yeah. game. Not oh, much yeah. chatter. Not much small. No. Uh, so so that happens. Meanwhile. Uh, everyone else gets ready preparing all the delicious food. Um, so I've got a menu lined up for today. Yeah, uh, Evertel is in the middle right now, in fact, of... Okay, so there's a lot of things going on in this house right there's now. There's a lot. Number one, I'm, I'm trying to get some videos done, some work done, which would be nice, wouldn't it, considering oh, we are yeah. a YouTube channel. Um, <laughs> uh, secondly, Evertel is cooking... Well, secondly, sorry, we've got uh, the plumber in, putting in our new bath, our new shower, uh, our new sink, uh, and our new radiator in, mm -hmm. in our new mm -hmm. bathroom. Yep. Thank you, patrons. Thank you. <laughs> it needed Although, doing, all right? It needed doing. Oh, God, um, yeah. And uh, we um, are also going to have uh, Thanksgiving dinner yes, with my uh, parents and uh, sister-in-law. She's coming over today. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you are cooking all of it. So what does it, what does it entail? Because I like, you know, I, I have it every year. But for me, it's like a Christmas dinner, but a little bit different. Oh, yeah. So it's not. So I know uh, UK people eat turkey for Christmas and we don't do that. I I mean, my Christmas is weird anyway, because we do Polish Christmas, Christmas Eve. But uh, so for Thanksgiving, I've got, um, well, I've got a turkey crown or like a joint, basically. Should feed, it's supposed to feed like six to eight people. So I think we might have some leftovers. Typically, we'd get a whole bird. And this is where I my Thanksgiving preparation duties where I would like drop out um, uh, because someone has to stick their hand up the turkey. Me, I'll do it. I, and remove. I, I volunteer a tribute. 
<laughs> it's his natural habitat. So oh, he, he wants... Wait, 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 yeah. wait, 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 wait. Why are you saying that's the reason we haven't got the full bird? That's outrageous. Because, what are you talking about? Because <laughs> I cannot be bothered doing that. But, and, and, the, but, and removing but, the giblets. Well, you spoil all my fun. Why did you spoil all my fun? Yeah. I could have done that. Uh, you remove that's, the giblets. That's the best bit. And uh, and then you uh, stuff the turkey. I cannot, I cannot be bothered stuffing a turkey so um we're, we're saving that for later but, but, but that robs us of you know all of the fun friends moments we could have where i've got the turkey on my head lol etc etc uh, yeah. my famous actor brother hugh will not be there no, no. um uh, he is indeed away filming right now uh, for a movie yes. that's Ooh, the kind of stuff exciting. he does right really so, good. Isn't that awesome yeah. right so uh, i got a new bathroom so who's the real winner <laughs> exactly so so this is this is what's happening uh i am making a like a, a turkey crown basically just a bit of turkey we'll feed six to eight very exciting um i've got a, a vegan oh so uh our brother and sister-in-law are my brother and sister-in-law are vegan and uh just sister-in-law is here but i want to make sure she has plenty to eat so we've got a actually really delicious vegan green bean casserole with crispy fried onions on top um and instead of like uh any kind of like butter or milk base it's kind of like an almond milky creamy base it's actually quite nice uh and then your um classic uh, sweet potato casserole with uh, candied walnuts on you top. Stop, man! I've only had a, a Sorry, bowl pecans. of rice krispies candied, today. Candied I'm, pecans. I'm dying. I'm <laughs> gagging for this. Um, candied pecans, pecans, pecans. I never know. I never know how to say that word, so I'm just gonna say. Uh, <laughs> pecan. We would say pecan nut pecan. over here. Pecan. Yeah, I yeah. think I would say pecan. As in, as in, you're like a voyeur. You're a pecan nut. <laughs> yeah, you're pecan. Yeah, no. Um, and uh, so we've got that. Uh, just gonna have some corn as well. I've got some cranberry sauce, not the classic uh, tinned, uh, canned cranberry sauce, which is the OG, but it's really hard to get over here. So uh, just got like you know uk style cranberry sauce it's still ocean spray so it should be fine uh and uh what else mashed potatoes creamy mashed potatoes with loads of butter uh and uh of course stovetop uh That's stuffing right yeah stovetop okay. stuffing which i bought specifically from like an american american food store here <laughs> for like an outrageous price i bought two boxes of stovetop uh because like we have stuffing you know that right like, <laughs> we, we've we've heard uh, of it we do yeah, have it but, okay if you've ever had stuffing over here it's not it's nice but it's like hard and dry and it's good it's it's really yummy and it's clearly like more of a f actual food than stovetop stovetop is fluffy delicious light like just incredible so it's not thanksgiving without stovetop for me so we've got two boxes of that on the go i i might have missed it because i zoned out trying to think about wow stuff that uh we're going to talk about <laughs> in, in just a second which we will i promise but um i gotta ask uh I, I might have missed it apologies if you said this yeah but do we have the cranberry that comes out of a tin no we do not likewise i know i know i know <laughs> Okay, see you next year. <laughs> Let's go get it. Oh, it's so funny. Thing, it is. Oh, it is. It's so good. It is, it is the best thing it's, about, it's the best uh, thing. about um, Thanksgiving, 100%. It's, I, yeah, that's, I think so. It's yeah. one of my favorites. Um, mm -hmm. So no, none of that. And also no pumpkin pie because I just haven't managed to source uh the stuff i needed for it this year but i will make some pumpkin pie afterwards when like all the the canned pumpkin goes on sale <laughs> okay so uh this is not relevant to wow at all but i'm glad we went into it because i wasn't feeling hungry enough when this no. podcast started and now i am now Starve. i'm starving now i'm famished i'm starving for news oh and me too news now this isn't <laughs> here's here's the thing right you know when we wanted to make a wow podcast mm -hmm. uh obviously we were like we want to do a podcast but we're just talking about wow and obviously that entails the news and things that are happening and things that are popping out but what we don't want is for this to be a wow news podcast as in it is exactly. our duty to impart to you the news we already have a wow uh, news show it's called the weekly reset it's on video Ex form you can exactly. watch it on this very channel exactly. unless you're listening on your podcast format in which case you can't go to Sally Snefdel, uh at on youtube and, mm -hmm. and watch it there mm -hmm. but 
so obviously there, there is lots of wow news. Um, the news that happened after our last podcast, which was episode one, when we started this endeavor and it all went very well. Nothing went technically wrong at all. In Not fact, at all. it was a slam dunk. It was a home run, as I believe. <laughs> oh, you great. Americans Thank you for these say. American sports yeah, reports. Exactly. This yeah. Makes me feel it really was welcome. A touchdown. <laughs> uh, and it just went it so well. Nothing, yeah, nothing wrong with it at all. <laughs> and uh, we put that episode out. We were very happy with it. We went, wow, we nailed it. Absolutely brilliant brilliant show where nothing went wrong and then i got it up on different podcast platforms and things like that and then do you know what we talked about blizzcon and we talked about uh the launch of 10.2 uh you talked about how much you hated the uh cinematic at the end of the raid i, was I agreed with you and then the internet decided that we defended it oh isn't it funny how that <laughs> happens <laughs> and but, you know we used to that so we put it out and we're like yay boom and then the next day i've told you know what happened what happened Blizzard announced 10.2.5. Of course they did. The absolute mad lads. They're always saving it. They're always saving it. Not completely unexpectedly, it has no, to be said. No. Uh, but I mean, I'm wondering now, you see, there hasn't been any kind of like big wow announcements this week. Uh, I think, have we had a PTR, a new PTR since then? Uh, I know we have had a 10.25 PTR, but have we, we have. had one since then? I wonder. I don't know. If this is going to be a thing where we do this podcast on a Thursday mm -hmm. and then on the Friday, they just announce a whole ton of news. I'm not sure that's a <laughs> I'm not sure this is a good time to have the podcast. I don't know. Maybe we should like put it a day forward or something. Maybe. Like that. Mm. Maybe. That's why it works so well, mm -hmm. having the weekly reset on the weekend, right? Exactly. Which you, it you, always Which is. always comes out. And just Do you remember when it used to come out on Saturdays? Yeah, I like... do. Before the babies. <laughs> yeah. So like it used to come out on Saturdays and then we had a, a, one baby. So it used to come out on Sundays. And now we've got two babies. So it usually comes out on a Monday. <laughs> just how it works I, dude, each that's just, baby adds an extra day of work exactly so. it's wild <laughs> uh, and and also costs more as well like yeah, I, I need incredible. to do an extra day of work to support them exactly uh, exactly but, uh, no i love them i'm definitely they're not for sale no. why why did you even bring that up why did you oh. even bring up the fact that we might want to sell our babies just, to anyone just, just american in I, me. I don't even know why you mentioned <laughs> it why why did you say that anyone who wants to buy our babies should just dm us with a decent price and we'll consider it <laughs> i that's not even something that i mentioned why did you bring it up i don't know um, um, so yeah, uh, two ten point two point five. Yeah. Uh, what was your initial? Because this is the great thing we haven't heard your reaction on this, Effie. What what is? What do you think? What what did you think when you saw it all? Well, it was like an absolute like baller move publishing that roadmap. At, you know, the day after our podcast, but also just yeah, it's there's so much there is so much new stuff coming. Like it is, it's. It, uh, I mean, I said this before. It's like almost overwhelming. But now that I'm back on the horse properly, as it were, like I'm running my keys. I'm doing my vault. I'm like I'm on top of it you know I'm not raiding hardcore but like I'm, I'm I'm back in it feeling like properly and wow this just like is even more momentum and it just makes me even more excited like there's just so much good stuff there's there's the whole I mean there are like trading posts things that have been data mined there are like cosmetic sets that look really good there's a whole Gilneas thing do you want to talk about the Gilneas thing? Well, I mean, like, I, I'm, I'm still just talking about the announcement, really. Yeah, and, and like, okay. Kind of what you thought of that. Uh, great. It's just, just <laughs> really good. Just like, I, I, so there's so much, there's just so much coming out at, like, at speed. And so it feels really good to see uh, Blizz being on top of it and, like, just continuing to roll out. And I feel like they've, you know, I've hit my stride in WoW again. And, like, they've also hit their stride, like, in the past couple of patches, like throughout Dragonflight, really, like they've just been knocking it out of the park, like just just giving us, like giving us more. What I love is like how surprising Dragonflight has been in that sense. Yeah, and right? and you meme, and I agree, and I love the meme of like world events and things, mm -hmm. and every single patch, oh, there's a new world event to do. Exactly. And it's like, oh, what's the world event this time, guys? And you know, I couldn't, I can't even list all the different world events that are in Dragonflight right now. You know, from the start, you've had like the Tuscar soup thing, mm -hmm. you've had the uh, Cobalt Assembly, mm -hmm. you've had the hunts you've had the attack on like the obsidian citadel uh, and then and then you had uh the the thingy tomorrow mm -hmm, and then you right? had the storm surges mm -hmm. and then you had the time rifts and then you had the dreams and the fear assaults and the elemental assaults and the uh dream surges and the thing whatever happened in zaralek caverns i don't know i can't remember it mm -hmm. um I, i'm sure you can't either. there was yeah. like a researchers event in zaralek yeah, caverns yeah. right uh, and you know there's just a million of them and 
I like to meme on it as much as anyone else. Good source of comedy. And you know me, I don't like to think too hard about my comedy. I like it to be no, something just... that I, you know, it's in my head already. So yeah, definitely world events, funny, haha. Mm-hmm. But they are all different. And in the patch where they're relevant, I have enjoyed with my alts, mm-hmm. barely ever on my main, but I have enjoyed every single one for different reasons, which is actually kind of uh, amazing, really. Mm-hmm. You know, um, yeah. Uh, and... So, but when I talk about Dragonflight surprising us, that's not that's not what I mean. Obviously, what do you they, mean? they have always surprised us with just how much work they're willing to put into it, mm. how much content they're willing to give us, mm-hmm. and I think you know. I think rightfully after like WAD and obviously Legion was great, uh, but BFA was great in many ways as well, but it's content cadence wasn't the best. So things were slowing down there. Yeah. And then we had Shadowlands. And so quite understandably, I think we as a player base have got quite cynical about, well, that this thing will never happen because mm. think of all the work, think of all the dev hours and things like that. Yeah. And, you know, we have had Ian in the past saying stuff like, well, that's going to cost a raid tier and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And and so fair enough. Uh, and, and so I think it's been such a... a, a pleasure actually it's such a surprise um for and it started with the roadmap didn't it it did it started with getting the roadmap out there mm-hmm. um at the beginning of the year and going yo this is what we're aiming to hit man and maybe we won't but this is what it is and having those two mid patches per major patch as well and you know we we, we looked at it and we're like they're gonna have to bring out one of these patches every eight weeks and they've absolutely done that mm-hmm. um and you know aside from that the 0.5 and 0.7 patches have oftentimes not every time but have oftentimes been way bigger than you'd ever expect Mm -hmm. you know and i think i think 10.25 is a prime example of that the idea that you know things that the the kind of level of content that i would have been expecting would have been you know the the uh you've got the thing up there haven't you once yeah i've just um yeah yeah. Uh, seeds of renewal trademark yeah so let me <laughs> TM. let me just uh bring that up on screen for the people that are watching it on youtube yeah um so i'm gonna bring your screen up okay hold on let me pull this up yeah all the way um there we go so yeah uh you know the kind of level of content that i would have been expecting mm-hmm. would have been the dragon riding unlocking although that was a surprise with how quickly it came mm-hmm. uh, to be honest um but you know that kind of level of thing is what you is what you'd expect yeah um the uh azerothian archives okay remind me what that one is again because the instant i heard that it wasn't a library i switched off yeah so we don't (laughs) know what that is unless you found some sort of data mining or anything about it i feel like someone said something about it's it's kind of a quest based thing is that right yeah yeah. okay um so uh you've got the wowhead page up there i don't know if you've got if that includes the actual article with the explanations there it it is discover the history of the dragon isles and meet a unique cast of characters hear stories of old and Witness the iconography, very interesting wording, of a time before. Participate in solo and group activities, instances within Traders Rest, with a weekly public event. Plenty of opportunity to explore and earn rewards like Battle Pets mounts and a transmog set. So that to me sounds like a variation, like of, of all of the things that Dragonflight has had so far, that sounds to me to be more like the uh Zascara vaults than anything else mm-hmm. you know a thing that you go into mm-hmm. and you can get a bit further every week mm-hmm. and you know with the Zascara vaults you were you were kind of aiming to level up your ring and stuff and and get that obviously there's probably not gonna be any power progression on this so it is no. just like a law thing no. you're unlocking like iconography what do you take from that you know because that oh, i know what iconography. iconography means but in terms of wow and in terms of this right what, what would you take that to mean so i i thought it, it must be like like uh maybe sharing like uh, i don't know like just i i imagined it as a kind of you're 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 hearing about things that happened in the past and as a little history lesson especially for people maybe who didn't play through like all of the previous expansions um you know and and like i imagine like a little little gallery like you can look at like little pictures and stuff but also i wonder if there's a way to just play old cinematics see okay so right. like maybe <laughs> this is this is this is what maybe. makes me laugh because you know i we have a habit of doing this as as uh content creators but i think that the entire player base does it as well honestly and mm. i think it's fair it's reasonable but yeah that's exactly what i thought when i heard this mm. when i heard about the azerothian archives mm-hmm. i was like 
Well, that's like the bureau from, like, yeah, from Final Fantasy XIV, where watch you can go you in want. and mm-hmm. watch old uh, cinematics and and hopefully even better. And I say this one thousand percent with my uh, like content creator hat on because it'd be so much easier in-game cutscenes mm-hmm. as well mm-hmm. that would be so amazing like i'm always searching for in-game cutscenes from different quest lines and stuff because i never bother to you know actually like file them properly in my in my nas drive and i'm always like searching that stuff yeah. out when i'm making yeah. videos and yeah it would be so nice to have some way to just go back and watch those mm-hmm. um and it's not going to be that no <laughs> it's something not we it's really not. want it to be and it's not going to i be. know it's not going to be uh, so, some people in chat have mentioned like wow props like a prop hunt like how cool if they how cool, cool would it be if they had you know like what do you mean by prop hunt though? like like famous you know like weapons and stuff like on display and so oh, you had to go and cool. like farm them or something yeah, and yeah. like get them um, like you know so who who knows what that's going to be um but it's fun and i like how it's lore oriented yeah, in some too. way and that that kind of draws me in more necessarily than like battle pets mounts and transmog although if the transmog is cool oh a hundred percent we'll see so i think that um the uh, of all of the wow uh dragonflight events that kind of nailed the collection aspect the best mm-hmm. has to be time rifts right because mm-hmm. time rifts had yeah, multiple vendors cool. uh and the stuff on the vendors also dropped from the event mm-hmm. but you also got a currency from the event to yeah. buy the stuff from the vendor and i was like boom i am not stopping till i get all this stuff. and you know everything was like reasonably priced because you can do that when there's so much of it you know yeah. um and it was all really good stuff mm-hmm. as well is like transmog but also pets and mounts and uh all kinds and there was even some power stuff for alts as well it was great and and yeah more, more of that kind of thing please i want yes please. i want the, the the archive vendor to be there with like loads of cool different stuff yeah. um and multiple vendors does a make it feel like there's more stuff and b make it so much easier to browse the stuff as well than having oh, yeah. everything on one vendor i'm a Absolutely. huge huge proponent of that i think i'm it's with great. you and what also excites me is one of the one of the transmog sets that they have data mined is the uh the set that you have like the explorers set that you Ooh, that so, seems nailed on to be as right archives. so yeah, they've yeah. they've uh data mined two recolors of that one uh and like the backpacks and stuff that come with it yeah. so now, if as that someone, is the set that you get for this then i am there because i i get so angry every time i see tally <laughs> rocking that incredible set but do, do you not, I, I, I no mean, i do you know, not have it i feel like maybe you should be uh, a bit concerned and <laughs> asking me how i feel about that because i no. spent quite a lot of money pretending to be my own friend i know a friend i know you so did I get that i remember set. hearing all about it <laughs> So, okay, in fairness, I did not create my recruiter friend just to get, you know, the recruiter friend rewards. That was just a happy accident. I recruited my, uh, I created my other account because I was farming the uh, Tuss of Manor off. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I had a little dual box thing going on. I'd have someone who I'd sit outside of uh the, the raid instance mm-hmm. with with the with the save, with the uh the progress lock with the lockout saved mm-hmm. every week and then my uh on my main account my my uh, fury warrior would go in and would start straight at uh, uh um garrosh because you can't well you can do that now but you couldn't do it back then you'd have to do the whole raid every week and yeah. that is that raid has got 112 bosses in it it's the <laughs> longest raid it just takes forever to do that raid's got 112 bosses spread out over oh. like a thousand miles um uh, between each boss it's like the worst so mm-hmm. you go in with your fury warrior with your speed potions and stuff you bought some things you get there and then halfway through killing the boss you would have to leave the group that you're in because then you get the 30 second cooldown uh, you get the 30 second countdown yeah. for when you're kicked out of the instance yeah. so then you are on a timer to kill the boss within 30 seconds and like the the like the perfect timing would be to kill him just have enough time to loot him and then you're teleported out of the dungeon to go and, uh, out yeah. of the uh, instance to go and do it all again so i ran um Siege of Rog, I, I ran Garrosh. I've killed Garrosh. I think last count was 800 and something kills. So you never got them in the end? No, I never got them. In the end. Oh, Tally. Oh, but what that man. meant is, obviously, I had this extra account that I was, you know, paying for. Uh, yeah. And so I was like, well, recruit a friend. Awesome. And that's how I got my set. But, you know, I paid for it all myself. You it was did. no one. I didn't no. have any friends. No. to. Re- what do you think I am? You are when. the only person in WoW history who's ever recruited a friend and got the rewards. And that friend was me. I did recruit you. Yeah. Yeah. And I've recruited other people since. Have you? Yeah. Oh. Our buddy Thunders. What? Thunders. 
Thunders was your recruiter friend. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe one of one one of Thunders but accounts. <laughs> what about me, Thunders, dude? Maybe I'll recruit you again if you want. Yeah, you recruit me hard, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow okay yeah, yeah. damn so if that is the set that does uh does anyway i'm fine with it i'm glad you can get the set what if what if you can get the tusks of manoroth from the azerothian archive i wouldn't want that i wouldn't want that i want i want it, i want it to be a i want it to be an achievement but just one that i can't be bothered doing anymore right right just, you know just what's the really reach. hard bit like, about it just out of reach yeah it's not even the killing garrosh a million times although i did hate that it was the killing the frogs you had to kill the oh, frogs to get right. the re-roll tokens oh. because that's how you could kill him as many times as you wanted yeah. you did the weekly yeah. kill but mm -hmm. also you could you could every time you killed him you could mm -hmm. if, you know with the instance lock and everything you could roll for loot with bonus rolls so it was like not just killing him constantly it was killing those fucking frogs in the timeless aisle sorry. to get the coins sorry oh it's the worst and i never even got the tusks uh what if you get <laughs> trading post um no so we uh, so we are going to be streaming on twitch sorry we wanted to get that set up for today but we didn't so next week we yeah, will be maybe, streaming on twitch maybe, maybe, maybe like, stream on twitch i feel like this show it's more important to have this on youtube than it is on twitch i, I agree you know, i agree a, it's a main channel thing really. yeah so yeah maybe we'll keep it on here we're still finding our feet with it um but yeah but but after uh this is done you'll be able to listen to it on audible and spotify and apple and everywhere you listen to podcasts as long it's one of the ones we put it on exactly yeah <laughs> but you'll find links exactly. to all that in the, in the description below this video so that's awesome yeah. uh yeah no yeah. I, I i feel like that explorer set is nailed on to be one of the uh, the rewards absolutely. from the azrothian archive uh, which absolutely. is fine i've already got that set in a different color um in a preferable color if you ask me but it's, it's an amazing set it's okay. really really good um yeah so i mean that's that's pretty cool isn't it um and uh, but i don't think it's going to be a cinematic viewing thing no I, it's not the other I thing know, that people have said that. because and people I'm have said this to me because they know it's something i want so bad the thing i want more than anything else in the entire game apart from playable tuscar is the library tab that's oh, what i live for yeah that's what i, I mean, really want that's that's yeah that's what i wanted want when i heard a library tab archives. i just want to be able to like Maybe. every time i pick up a book and read it i just want to be able to save it in my library tab so it's not in my bags and it's not in my bank and it's not just sold to a vendor and i can go back and read it anytime i want and i yeah. want it to be nicely organized and when player housing comes in i want to have a big wall of books that are my library with a little ladder and a nice little lamp oh, and my I character know. just wheels along the ladder the goes dream. up it and it's like dream stop stop oh that's you know it. like that it'd be amazing it'd be so good yeah. but um Oh, that was leading me to something, but I've forgotten it. Oh, yeah. Speaking of books, I picked up two this week. Did you? On the, so something that, that launched this week uh, with the reset. And we're going to go back to talking about um, uh, 10.2.5 in just a moment. But I want to talk about this one. It's fresh in my memory. Right. Um, and the Azeroth Archives has made me think about it because I think it, there's probably quite a strong chance they might be linked in some way. And that is uh, the tier quests released this week. The, the culmination yes. of the tier quests. Have you done them? I have. Now, you were doing them yesterday as yeah. I was doing something else. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you were sitting there and I was sitting here and you just kept going... <laughs> and i wanted to turn around and look at your screen so bad and i was like ah. <laughs> okay so you've done it now i have done you it, have I, did done it, it now. I did it at 2 a.m last night oh, oh uh, that's why i was late to okay, bed sorry so, so 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 chat obviously if you have not done the tier quest line if you do not want to know what happens there just just keep keep the podcast on just mute it you know just mute for now but uh um, uh, did you, did you, did you catch Runus? Yes. Thank you. And, oh. uh, imagine if you hadn't caught Runus. Oh, imagine if you'd done that. So, so, oh. okay. Blue Bot spoilers yeah. for this quest, which is out and which anyone can just go and do, but we are going to talk about it now. So, mm -hmm. um, but, uh, yeah, yeah. So as expected, we got sent to the Nighthold. It's just a little scenario going through Love the Nighthold and you do meet runus who is now runus the bright okay so it was established before you go in that mm -hmm. it's an alternate timeline right um you know it's not the elisand that we killed no it's obviously not the runus that we met in no. legion in the uh the azus 
uh, Azuna is the zone. Azuna, yeah. Um, and, um, you know, generally considered, I think, to be one of the best little leveling quest lines it, in WoW. It's pretty <laughs> iconic. <laughs> yeah, it's really, really cool. Um, so to see him there as a researcher oh. and to be really cool and chill and, like, you're there murdering all his peeps and he's like, hey, try not yeah. to murder all the peeps. Yeah, exa right? exactly. You're killing everyone and he's just there sorting through his books uh just looking through his stuff and uh yeah and he calls he's called runus the bright and when did you click on him to, to talk to him of course yeah, yeah. yeah and when you click on him the, to, to chat with him he's like i don't know you but um something about you is really familiar to yeah, me yeah, and yeah. i was just like <laughs> oh, i love i love I yeah so like I I just brought me to tears like I lo I love I loved Runus. Runus was one of those things from Legion that like has stuck with me. You know like when you play the game just little bits and things just like just stay with you and that's one of those that I just I just loved it so much. And then of course you you work your way up and you and you get to fight Elisand. Yeah. Um and uh she even like revives you know like some of her old mechanics and uh it's it's it, but I I I yeah I but, I loved that. The thing I loved about uh, that um scenario the best was uh and again you know i i just really liked the whole vibe of it i love the silver hand uh, the tears guard oh they're so good aren't like, they just a good bunch of characters the, a good little and, buddy yeah buddy exactly. group. And, and you were actually doing that quest you had to a bit catching up to do on the yeah, tier quest line, so you actually had to go back ago, and do yeah. the recruiting quest line mm -hmm. uh and just before you did that so that was all fresh in your mind as well and i just think they yeah. they're cool they're really nice guys um and uh, you know i feel like that is something that wow has been lacking for a long time you know the kind of the wow equivalent of the scions really or something like that and mm. you know tears guard aren't that but they are a group of people mm -hmm. who you know we have not seen the last of them and you know they're they're five or six individual like very individual characters with you know their own voice actors and all their lines are always voiced which is brilliant they've mm -hmm. always got like some really cool history going on they're and good. stuff and, they're good, uh, right? I, you know did you find the logbook for the recruiting of them well uh i found the book that, that that you pick up right at the very end well i picked up right at the very beginning oh okay oh <laughs> Oh, of course. It's just there, the yeah, place, yeah. Of course. And um, I picked and, it up and, right at the end because it was sparkling. Yeah, like, oh, totally. Sparkling um, and then, of course, I read uh, Runus's book as well. Did you find that? <gasps> no, you oh, can read Runus's oh, book. Oh. Tell me, tell me all about Runus. It's, it's book. like it's just Runus's book. It's oh, next to him in in the in the thing. Oh. But so yeah, we go to this alternate timeline because the the disc to uh, bring Tia back and and kind of get him back online mm -hmm. uh, from our reality found its way. You know, it got taken and sent to mm -hmm. that alternate timeline yeah so we went to get it um and the thing is right you know for, to us Elisand is this baddie but in this other timeline she's just she's just Elisand, right so we're going through the night hold killing guards and whenever you know we've just appeared in the night hold and yeah. guards are like huh yo what are you doing <laughs> yeah. and then we start killing them and they're like hey no stop these people yeah. and then it's like yeah and, and you know the, the characters are, are talking about this as well going this doesn't feel good no <laughs> this doesn't feel right like these of course these dudes are attacking us we just appeared in their like house yeah yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah exactly um and and we, you know they have these conversations about it and then then we we kind of go to fight elisand well, we meet runas and we go to fight uh elisand and elisand keeps like beating what? us because he keeps turning back time yeah. mm -hmm. and you know each member of the of the uh tears guy comes up with a different way to try and beat her yeah and keeps failing uh until at the end uh, do you remember her name? No, the, I was the Draenei just to, Paladin. Yeah, it's the Draenei lady, the one who had to sit out for a bit because she got nailed in yeah. uh, in uh, Nihilotha. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, she, and and she's like, um, I let me let me do this. <laughs> yeah. And then she just like puts her weapon down and is like, Yo, this you, you, let's let's do this. And you're like, uh Oh, big big bad Elisand isn't gonna listen. And she's like. Yeah, okay, fine. Yeah, yeah, basically, <laughs> like, we just win by asking her for it. Yeah, you yeah. know, we're like, hey, we, we, we need this for Tia, like, he's important, and we mm -hmm. need him to get him, we need it to get him back, and she's like, it's cool, I've learned everything I need to from it anyway, yeah, so exactly. yeah, fine, and, and then, I mean, then she gives us the disc, and she disappears mm -hmm. through a portal, she's like, I now know what I need to know to save, to save my, my people. people, Yeah. so, you know, there is an alternate timeline, Elisand, <gasps> like, zooming through time and space, trying to find a way to protect well now she she's got a plan to yeah. protect her people from the legion which she knows is coming in, in her this. timeline so i mean i imagine that's probably going to be quite or relatively important at some point right yeah yeah um, definitely i've seen uh there are a couple of like uh brief in-game cutscenes uh um involved with that quest line as well i've seen and i haven't listened to anyone talking about it because i hadn't actually played it when i saw these kind of videos and articles and comments and stuff 
going mm. on. I have heard people mention that they thought it was a bit underwhelming. What's your opinion on that? It it it's just it's just like another bit of story quest. Like mm-hmm. to be honest, I didn't I when I picked up the like kind of the first bit of that tears kind of tears guard quest line, I was like whatever. But then you you chat with everyone, you do their little quests, you do all their little individual bits, and I really enjoyed it. I really liked this. Again, I think people get like overhyped because they're like oh Alice, we're going to the night hold what's gonna happen in the night hold and and then you're like oh just a little bit more of story is happening yeah, yeah. you know like just a tiny chapter and, and so no i don't think it was underwhelming at all <laughs> like it you know i i really i really en- enjoyed that bit and then of course you go back you wake tear up and he's like oh and they're like he's uh, like, hi <laughs> he's like you are and he's like yes it's like yeah that's a dranai and that is oh yeah because he's never met dranai yeah before, right? so, yeah so he went under before the sundering <laughs> yeah um so anything that's happened after that uh you know blood elves are gonna be quite surprising to him yeah um, he's like huh very interesting and, and i humans and dwarves yeah and, uh, yeah, like, yeah. And, I, and i actually i and i really liked uh i liked the way the tears guard is like uh and they introduce their, themselves and they're like hello uh we've are you know we've built our life around like the, the example that you set and now you're here and now i don't don't really know what to say to you but let's just kind of sit and be together for a little while i was like yes it's good yeah it's really nice I, to just yeah. have a chill man yeah um and, and then you go back to the uh the enclave to the uh you know uh where they are mm-hmm. and you as always you get some nice kind of you know click and read lines mm-hmm. Um, with them yeah uh, which is which is always nice and there there was one click and read line in particular that kind mm-hmm. of uh excited me actually and it's with uh talthus the, the the blood elf um and i'm gonna go back to this here and i'm gonna take this off uh and i'm gonna put uh, oh. that on there we are oh um because uh yeah you go back and you, and, you, and you chat to them all yeah and you talk to talthus and talthus is like i asked Tyr what wrongs he planned on writing first in this world because this is really exciting there's a titan yeah. watcher back right who is like you know all kinds of things can happen yeah. now who particularly knows? in the lead up to the last titan i would have thought mm. um i asked Tyr what uh, wrongs he planned on writing first in the world the chaos in northrend or the broken isles kelthalas uh, his response surprised me truthfully he said he must order his own mind and learn about his new this new world before intruding onto our own but you know i couldn't help noticing that the, the two at least two of those places mm. that talthus brings up mm-hmm. are places that we know are getting reworked right. in the world soul saga <gasps> right so he brings right. up northrend and uh-huh. we know that is getting reworked yeah. uh, to be the zone in um uh, uh last titan oh good good f- Kel- for last we know is getting reworked for midnight of course right? yeah. so and you know talthus is saying what wrongs you plan on writing the chaos so you mm-hmm. know is that could there be a tier related kind of titan rejuvenation of some of these oh. or something is that going to be uh, oh, is that, is that how they're going to formalize like a revamp in mm-hmm. that way or something but it's like, like that? it's it, oh you know and i do more and more i have been thinking uh, because you know i kind of dismissed it as not that important at the time but i do think more and more about the what i always call the dragon riding trailer uh you know the 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 big cgi kind of sour fang cgi style uh kind of racing dwarf girl yeah the racing dwarf girl who is just like uh, incredible and wonderful and and, and beautiful and and wise what was her name again we knew her name oh she did get a name but i can't remember what it was um and you know a troll dude who's pretty cool too but that cinematic ends with them flying by alex straza and the dwarf girl doing her great (sighs) face when she sees that strata yeah. so cool yeah. and then that's gonna sound weird on just the podcast but <laughs> honestly my impression of it was so good honestly you you would have thought you were watching the, if you could see my face <laughs> just then don't tell the chat will tell you oh, oh no. i looked like the dwarf girl that's actually it was a really good reminder good because I, I keep reacting with my face instead of my voice so that's it thanks for the reminder tally i'll make sure to interject more like <laughs> oh mm, right. yeah yeah <laughs> toddy <laughs> was that her name toddy yeah uh, was it toddy yeah yeah um and uh i have to just stop and, and say uh christopher thank you so much for the uh the, oh, the really Dragonosi big cheer there here. Absolutely Cheers, thank you mate thank you. Uh, much appreciated thank you toddy. take 
out tonight. How do you um, whiskers? Oh, excuse oh, me. It's Thanksgiving. We're not oh, getting takeout. Oh, sorry. It's yeah, I meant tomorrow. I meant it's... tomorrow. Yeah. Well, always good to have. Well, no. Always good to have a, a, a takeout on. You know what? You know what we're eating tomorrow? <laughs> Thanksgiving leftovers. Dude, there's not going to be any Thanksgiving leftovers. Oh wait, we're not leftovers. eating Thanksgiving. You've met my we're family. We're going out tomorrow. There's not going to be we any have a Thanksgiving date leftovers. Tomorrow. Nah. We're no. going on a parent date tomorrow. Oh, we are. Yeah. We, yeah, are. we are. So we're eating tapas. Oh, um, so you're just wrong nice. on all okay. counts. Okay. And then on Monday, we're going to a uh, what's the event called? The Shakespeare Schools Gala. Gala. We're going to a gala. gala in the West End. Yeah. Because I, be you know, I, I made a thing for some people. Yeah. And, mummy know. and Daddy are going to London going for the West End. And then yeah. Of honor oh. uh, with some semi famous actors. Hey, some very famous actors yeah. will be there. Yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah. You, I, I know you love a party with famous actors. Oh. I know that's like your favorite thing. I love it. Um, it. When we first started dating, you know, I'd, I'd only just given up acting, <laughs> which is why I was working in the museum and, and, and met Evertel in the first place. And, you know, Obviously, I'd been I'd been an actor in London for like 10 years. And at the time, like most kind of women in the world at the time, you were kind of like really into Benedict Cumberbatch and Tom Hiddleston, right? And I like, would say I am still into Tom Hiddleston. Oh, less nice. Less Benedict Cumberbatch. Wow. Okay, cool. Just as, you know. Yeah, well, Loki was really good in the end. Loki was good in the end. I thought it was oh, great. Oh, those last, last two episodes, two episodes were, were absolutely bad. We're like really, really like Yeah, really good. Really good. I actually look forward to maybe rewatching some of those in the future. Mm, I might just watch the last two episodes. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. That's why I said some. <laughs> that's why I just said some of those. Because, yeah. But um, but anyway, you were saying. I was saying that, um, yeah, and, and you know, it, 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 that's awesome and everything. And that's really cool. But, you know, you, you had like kind of celebrity crushes on them oh like oh obviously and i, I remember feeling like such a dick because i i <laughs> one day I, I had to say to you i was like look that's new it's absolutely awesome that you have celebrity crushes on on these people however if we continue to date but just so you're aware <laughs> why hi that there's like a much higher than zero percent chance that we are going to meet these people mm -hmm. because like that's just the circles i move in because of my job that i just used to have and that i used to do and and what I, all i'm saying is if you if you go too over the top with this whole crush thing it's mm -hmm. going to be weird and i'm not going to want to introduce you to them and stuff like yeah. that like no, that's so totally and, you know I, I it's impossible to say that without sounding like a complete asshole for like multiple different reasons Absolutely. and and you like rolled your eyes and you were like yeah whatever i did it so i was like okay and then literally like the next week <laughs> we got an invitation to go to Middle Temple Hall, which is like a, 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 like a 14th century building where Shakespeare plays had been kind of uh, like, like performed, performed and stuff right? like that for like, for like a, a going away party for um, Richard, I want to say Richard Attenborough, uh, who directed me in a play yes, at the yeah. uh, Almeida. And yeah. we went to that. And who was there? benedict cumberbatch and like a million forget. other hot actors and because, stuff and and then and then what him. happened a couple of years later <laughs> my friend charlie cox was in betrayal in the west end and we went to see it and he took us backstage afterwards and who did we have a big uh, like a uh, handshake from uh, but you say a big handshake it was a, it was a sweaty it was, post it was play a, oh he was literally was a, standing it, yeah they just come off stage man yeah it was anyway it was tom middleston and he was like very uh like that whole that whole performance he's very like taut yes <laughs> he, like, yeah. wears, well, i mean he's he, like, a taut man little like like, like ex just like skin tight like jumpers <laughs> and stuff and like it you know and he was just yeah obviously the instant he saw people coming backstage you, you know he's like oh no you know what i mean like yeah. polite like curt friendly handshake just nod. come off stage just yeah to chill, i know i know like, i know um, but and, was incredibly um, polite and he was so polite and he was so kind and like and he knew that he had to go and do the line outside like afterwards as well oh yeah so like, anyway hundreds of tourists and stuff and it was and it, it, yeah. and it was and it was charlie who was like these are my friends <laughs> yeah me tom and i was like thanks and then we went to his dressing room and i tried on his daredevil mask <laughs> yeah <laughs> he had a daredevil mask that he had to sign to send to some like you know his charity thing. yeah he was of like, course. And, and he was like oh sorry don't don't mind the mess there's my daredevil devil mask yeah and there was just like this pause and, and, like, and uh, there's just like a, a lull in the conversation he just looked at me and he went do you want to try it on? do you want to put it on like, yeah. yes i do i do i do want to try yeah. on your daredevil mask thank you yeah. <laughs>
Um, hey, oh. buddy, good to see you, man. Oh, good so to good see to you, see you buddy. Lots of awesome Cheers. people here today. So the upshot is, like, right. you rolled your eyes, um, rightfully so, I yes. think, like, I, to, I when did, I said that. I but within, a, within, well, within a month, we'd, you know, been at a party yeah, when it came back. I, I and within a couple of years, we met Tom Hiddleston as well. Exactly, so exactly. I, I so. kind of was right. You, you, were, you were right. And I no longer harbor, like, weird crushes for them. That's good. Just That's a normal, nice. healthy appreciation. Although I do think... I was I was weirdly thinking of Tom Hiddleston this morning because I was thinking of like um, people that I find striking because I was thinking so this is like the biggest tangent in the world because uh, we've been watching it's okay I can link Tom Hiddleston love back to Christy Golden I mean <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah, all yeah. wow exactly this is going to come full circle <laughs> in a minute and it's just, there's, a, there's a journey we're this going on this is my plan because we've been watching we've been watching Blue Eye Samurai and like I was thinking about the main character who is this like uh like a woman you know ostensibly a woman who um uh is like very uh androgynous uh you know ba basically going about as a samurai and, uh, and i was just thinking about like the kind of and i was like this is so appealing to me but i love that kind of character who's like a bit like refined and kind of playing with gender a bit and so tom hiddleston just kind of falls into that barrel for me because he's just so tall and elongated and kind of ethereal and like you know a slightly yeah. more masculine version of like the tilda swinton like anyway very big tangent but did you know that christy golden loves tom hiddleston like she does wow she does wow stuff doesn't she she does wow fantastic there we go <laughs> Thank goodness for that. I'm trying. You shared this photo uh, on our it Instagram, was, it but was I can't on find. A story. It was oh, a I don't story. know what the that story. means. I know you don't know what that means. Okay, have you got the photo like handy? Uh, because people want to see it, man. You can't just like bring that you, up and then. You want like... you um. Hold on. Let me see if I can pull pull it up quickly. Sorry. Oh, you mean the the one with Charlie? Yeah, Charlie yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, totally. Um, um, but uh, yes. Yeah, so I don't know why we started talking about that. Know, I'm so um, sorry. Like it was oh, it was so linked was, to something was, really really there good. There was a reason that. <laughs> Uh, uh, something about Tom Hiddleston. Yeah, so that's, I can't even remember. that's where I've lost the thread a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it, it was definitely... The thing was, it was originally linked to something really, really good. It was really good. Um, uh, mm. But anyway, so Tear is back in the world. Uh, I, I think there's a little hint to uh, world rejuvenation. Oh, yeah, okay, so the Hold cinematic. On. The cinematic, right? Yeah. Was uh, the dragon riding cinematic. In the dragon riding yes, cinematic. Yes, right. Um, there's a bit at the end where Alex Straza pops up and she's flying along and she breathes red fire on the ground. And as she breathes red fire on the ground, kind of like, you know, uh, dead kind of sort of brown dead grass and trees and stuff are rejuvenated and turn mm. into luscious, verdant kind of foliage and stuff yes. like that. Um, and, uh, you know, I didn't really think much of it at the time. I thought, it's just showing out Estraza's powers and stuff yeah, and, and, sure. and what have you. But then now with the World Soul Saga and stuff and the fact that, you know, we know that Elthalas is going to get redone. We know mm -hmm. that um, Northrend is going to get redone. That I, and both of those things are hinted at in these tier quest lines at the end, which I find really interesting. I wonder if we are going to see Alex Straza do some of that in real life. It, it would be nice to see her do something, right? Yeah. Because she's barely done anything in this expansion, if we're completely mm. honest. I mean, she she kind of stands about, looking kind of you know, and delivers. Her, well, I'm, like... I'm glad you count <laughs> standing about as doing something. <laughs> <laughs> I will remember that. <laughs> uh, she hasn't she hasn't been like the the most active. No, um, she I know she hasn't. keeps getting beaten up whenever she tries to do anything. Um, yeah. Uh, by by various uh, primal incarnates. Yeah. But um, yeah, she does kind of. No, you're right, actually, and she's extremely powerful, right? She's she's like. Well, she's, yeah, she's but she's got dog. like good life breathy. She breath. does. She does. But um, yeah, I yeah, that's a good point, actually. I haven't I haven't really thought about her not being the most like active character. Yeah. I mean, but it would be a very yeah. quick and easy way of fixing up the dead scar, it would wouldn't be. it? It wouldn't. It would. If she was be. just like, and and you know what she's breathing on in that cinematic is not un like the dead scar um you know it's mm. like that kind of dead ground and there's no like undead things walking around yeah. it as far as i can see but it is very kind of you know dead ground mm -hmm. and, and so sort of which she is rejuvenating now she has her ass pectoral powers back <laughs> exactly she can she's got the, everything is on the table the moon on a stick she can do anything she wants <laughs> <laughs> 
um yeah exactly so that that just got me yeah. thinking anyway and, and okay. the tier quest yeah. line but did you you like the tier quest line you didn't find it um underwhelming uh, at all no i really enjoyed it like maybe people were like oh tears returning it's gonna be a big 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 thing like it, it is but it's also like a few people have brought him back and yeah you know it's not like they've they put parading him around town being like here he is everybody you know it's it's um but I they kind it. of they kind good. of will at some point I, I bet yeah i'm sure they will but he needs time at first it's like he's yeah. like i need time to and just... he's got a lot of kind of uh, speech options as well mm. where you can ask him some questions you're like yo what happened with the black empire you know yeah. what do you feel about this no option to ask yo what's going on with all that mind control water and stuff dude like you right, know yeah. the whole and you know those experiments that you were doing on dragons like yeah. what about them and yeah. uh what about the whole kind of infecting the prime incarnate's eggs without kind of asking yeah. them and stuff like that you know oh do you think he's we gonna we're not die? allowed to ask the hard questions this was a softball interview do you think he's gonna be approved questions turned into pulverized into like stone dust do you think he's gonna is he gonna have to die uh is there gonna be some kind of like revenge so people are you? saying the tier is at a major cell as well which mm -hmm. i haven't seen i haven't been that I, I guess you mean oh i haven't planes seen a major cell ah. um so because a major cell is not in the skybox for you yet is it because you haven't no, completed the raid. no because how is your raid <laughs> progress going well, the second wing of LFR has just dropped, so I'll have to play that tonight. I did it last oh, night in desperate hopes of getting any tier. Did you? Oh, and you did. Oh, you didn't. I did, did you? not. Oh. I had. You know. I okay. So. I oh didn't. well, that's another thing we can do on Thursdays. We can do our mm. vault report. Yeah, exactly. Oh, <laughs> vault report. Yeah, totally. Why? Why would we? Why? Why? I think we've got a nice, cozy vibe here in the podcast. <laughs> sorry. Why would you want to bring the hate into it? I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, my my vault wasn't like the most packed vault ever. I had mm. five things unlocked. I had we ran through the normal raid and we smashed normal raid mm. we did it in one night which i'm glad about because i only want to do heroic really i was kind of disappointed we were even going into normal to be honest but we smashed it we beat firak and and you know now we're doing heroic progress and i just don't want it to be too easy i just don't want the raid yeah. to be too easy evie but i think it's too easy oh i know because i think you, it's going to be too easy you say that now because you've gotten through the first few heroic bosses yeah, and, but and i think a, it's going to ramp up but we got to a boss who is hard uh you know what's his name uh fiery lad you know the dude Larodar? yeah him yeah. and fire patches everywhere and you've got to heal ads mm -hmm. that have like no indicator and you're just like oh what i just gonna click on these mofos mm. like a like a scrub oh my god mm -hmm. and and Farinir having major problems because of course he uses a healing add-on where mm. like right click is one spell left click is another spell and stuff mm. like that right and you know that's just absolutely useless for healing ads that don't appear in your frames yeah. um and uh yeah it was uh pretty bad um but but even then and you know I didn't I haven't looked at our kind of execution ratings or whatever, mm. but we got him down to three percent and we were rubbish. We were getting hit by everything. You know, we pulled him about ten times probably. Mm -hmm. And we were getting hit by anything and everything. Um, and we still got him down to three percent, and that was with, you know, no gear, just walking in fresh. Mm. Uh and okay. you know, when we come back this week, or well, their rating tonight, I won't be there because of uh Because of what, Tally? because of thanksgiving that's right and i'm thankful that thanksgiving always always it's for always some unknown reason always it lands on a thursday i.e raid thursday. night that's just the, it's, it's, it's the last insanity. thursday why that's so is it crazy the last thursday yeah well, can't they do fridays is, instead yeah. i know no, is it the last all, thursday it can't be the last think, thursday of the month please I tell think, me it's not the last thursday i think thursday it is the, the last thursday of the month oh, shit, my life. is okay. it it can't be please might be um wow okay yeah i i know i had to i had to disable my voodoo can you believe it oh. voodoo the healing add-on which is which is uh, mandatory for yeah. raiders yeah and so mm -hmm. because of that mm -hmm. uh and you know i have this this really special add-on that means you can't see my voodoo on screen when i'm oh, streaming because yeah because I, I, I feel right, like people I don't see. like add-ons everywhere right no, so when i'm streaming don't. yeah it looks like I'm, i don't even have voodoo on mm. so the naked eye someone to like your average layperson, you know, they'd look at my stream and they'd be like, that dude's not even running a healing add-on. What's going on? I don't see any voodoo. And I would say to you, but that would mean that I was breaking guild rules by not equipping our mandatory healing add-on, which is mandated by literally the raiding rules. And so I, of course I have it. Of course I'm using it. It's just I'm also using a really special add-on, which means to, you can't see just it, to keep it on my stream. Oh, yeah. I totally understand um, that. Tell so I had to disable my voodoo is what I'm saying to, I, to I, heal yeah, these ads. That's, yeah. I mean, that's really noble of you. But I, it's so yeah, chat is, is telling us that Thanksgiving comes on the, the, on the 
third Thursday. Third Thursday. Third right. Thursday. So there is one more Thursday. Yeah, thank goodness Next for week. that. Dude, Next I got sponsorship week. videos to get out and stuff. I know, man. I, know, I don't want to be like I I don't want to be whacking a sponsorship on this podcast next week <laughs> just like that okay there you go bye out the door um yeah uh, we are celebrating thanksgiving we yeah are. uh if uh, evie runs off like very quickly in the middle of this podcast for a second it's, it's either like, because make some green beans uh, well it's, it's either because you need to make some green beans or it's because the plumber is like ah uh, something's gone very uh, wrong yeah <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I happy Thanksgiving, okay. everyone. Happy what's, Thanksgiving, what's the, happy what's the Thanksgiving uh, equivalent festival in WoW? In WoW? Mm. Uh, ooh, it's like the Horn of Plenty or something. Winter's hot. No. <laughs> like, um, it's, always, it's like harvest. It's just a harvest. I forget what the what the WoW uh, holiday is. Okay. Um, I, I do not remember. Sure. I don't, I don't celebrate that one. Time does indeed. Oh, yeah. Fly. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Anyway, so right. uh, I, that that was um, that was tier. And he's down at the major still apparently. Oh he no, is. we were talking about raid. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I I did all that and I and then I did a couple of mythic pluses. I did enough mythic pluses to fill up two boxes in in the mythic plus vault. And one of them was like a fourteen. Yeah. Would have been a fifteen. Me and Evie were absolutely oh. bopping a fifteen late <laughs> no, uh, we Tuesday night. Uh, absolutely destroying I, oh that fifteen. And the then thing. our shaman left the group and we no, were like, had to downgrade it to a fourteen. Not, yeah. Then we smashed the fourteen. We did. It went by but, in a blink of an eye. Uh, Only thirty something deaths. Yeah not so not so bad um yeah, it's so funny because i was like i'm gonna get back onto my keys i didn't do any last season i didn't do like any of the season before so i was like it's time i'm back on it and i was like who wants to do my plus two ever bloom uh and and tally was like yeah, yeah yeah i'll help i'll help let's log on and i was like yeah awesome great this could be easy just like just easing in and he's like no nah, let's do let's do my plus 14 let's do my plus 14 waycrest manor and i was like mm, oh Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we fun. did. And did you get any yeah. good gear from it? You got a gun, didn't you? Oh, well, I ended up getting it from my vault. Thank you to you go, running that, that 14. Whereas my vault was literally the worst vault I've ever had in my entire life. Oh, yeah. Do so tell. At this stage, so what I need is it's I need so tier, sad. right? Because I'm a healer, so I ain't getting any gear in raid. No one's have, no one's given me any oh. tier sets, uh, any tier pieces in raid, right? And the disc tier set is actually very, very powerful. I think the full set is among, you know, in the extra power that it gives you, mm. I think the four set is among the best four sets of this season you know mm. um and so i i do kind of really really want it uh but you know my only way of getting it is going to be not relying on the raid giving me loot right mm. so uh obviously we have a catalyst charge now we're gonna be getting another one next week and i just really needed some tier i just need I, and failing that just like any season three gear item that yeah. i can put on right my uh my rep is up at uh 17 i think oh wow um so i, uh, I think i with a bit, a bit of i don't I, i'm not i haven't done the maths but i think with a bit of luck i'll get the heroic token by the end of the week oh nice so me not having nice. raid tonight will actually kind of maybe help me so maybe. that'll be good yeah. and then uh but then i still need like a piece of gear that i can put in the catalyst yeah. you know and i've got some like rubbish ones that i've picked up here and there some yeah. like kind of 460s or whatever some 458s yeah uh but you know nothing nothing good <laughs> yeah oh yeah yeah the 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 tier like bonus the two set for marksman hunter is just like more damage <laughs> i think it's yeah. like volley gets more like literally it's just like more damage yeah. like, oh perfect it's not like this maybe triggers if it's like nope this this just does bigger bigger well, deeps i, I gotta admit i <laughs> was it. i was guilty of so looking good. at the, the disc tier set um the two set which is like just really increases the damage of your smite mm -hmm. and i was like well that's rubbish uh I, until i started actually raiding this season i was like, like oh, oh i basically only press smite now. <laughs> yeah exactly. that's basically yeah. all i do yeah. okay i understand that's pretty good then yeah yeah <laughs> uh so the catalyst is, uh, for people asking in chat if, if you if you are and you know what we, oh, we've yeah. noticed this with dragonflight yeah we do have to explain stuff a lot because it's an expansion and particularly since the uh announcements of blizzcon mm. lots of people are coming back into the game yeah and dragonflight has got so much stuff going on so little of it mandatory um, but if, mm. if you left at certain mm -hmm. points, uh, maybe in BFA or during Shadowlands or uh, in Dragonflight, it can be very, very overwhelming. Uh, the, mm. the, the Catalyst is probably a, a new concept to a lot of you. You can put any current season gear 
Uh, so that would be gear that you got from uh, Mythic Plus or Raid or certain high-level outdoor content yeah, or PvP. Um, it allows you to basically whack it in the Creation Catalyst and transform it into the corresponding tier set piece. So if you just got like some hat from a Mythic Plus uh, dungeon, and it'll be the same item level that you put it in as. Mm -hmm. So you get a hat and you're like, dude, I'm missing my tier set hat. You go and put it in the Catalyst and it turns it into the tier set hat and boom, you got your fourth piece. What and this think? is just like such an amazing, like, you, you know, I understand people who haven't been around to to make take advantage of this. They'll be like, why, why do we have the system? Well, this is just like the best way, especially if you're not raiding. Yeah. You can just get tier your, your yeah, tier yeah. set and, and what it means is incredible. that you can you can get your tier set even if you don't do any open world content because you don't have to do anything for those cat the catalyst charges uh you get one catalyst charge every two weeks now mm -hmm. and they'll probably change it to one every week later on i'd have thought um and and yeah. so that means you know and those charges just happen no mm -hmm. matter what content you're mm -hmm. doing so you know as an open world player you can just eventually get your four set without having to set foot which in raid is, which is really or, uh, really mythic really plus. good and that's great isn't that cool really, really, you know really good. it's gonna be slower than if you were going yeah. into raid and, and mythic plus, like considerably slower but you're gonna do it and so so exactly. you know there's such great kind of uh gear dispensing catch-up things with all these events and stuff in mm -hmm. the mid patches too mm -hmm. i i i play i run 13 characters like one of every class i think there's 13 i've got one of every class anyway a nice level and you know for the first time ever they have all got uh four set every season nice and they've all got well their their lfr normal and in most cases heroic appearances from those yeah, as well yeah and that's the thing um, you because can just, of the upgrade yeah. system i can collect the gear at normal or lfr and i can upgrade it to heroic and uh or normal and heroic as well it's which so is good. great it's so good it's so good yeah uh we we were playing on eu servers we yeah. started we both started on us servers actually ages ago so the the og Avatel is like out there somewhere but um yeah, we yeah. Are, we're we're so, argent done i think it is overwhelming for new players when they come into dragonflight especially this yeah. far in the season because dragonflight has so much stuff and the trick is of course that most of that stuff isn't mandatory to power progression and stuff in the slightest no. and we were talking about this the other day but i think that at this stage People are logging into the game and they've got one of two things that they want to do. Either they want to fast track their gear progression so they can go and join Mythic Pluses and raids with mm -hmm. their friends and their buddies, um, which is great. Or they want to go through the story and, and, and then start on that stuff. But they, they want to experience the story of Dragonflight in some kind of order mm -hmm. uh, and some kind of satisfying way. Yeah. And uh, I feel like coming back at the moment is so geared up towards getting you relevant uh and and kind of up to date as quickly as possible because that's what most people want in fairness yeah. oh if absolutely. you are coming back hoping for a kind of coherent story experience it's kind of difficult because all of the different stages of what we call shield quests something that they introduced in shadowlands which i really like is you know all main story quests as it were mandatory quests that you have to complete to progress the storyline and in some cases unlock things they will have a, a shield around the exclamation mark so you know those are good ones to mm -hmm. kind of follow mm -hmm. um at this stage all of the shield quests from each different patch are kind of just up at the same time so yeah. if you go into valdraken you've got like you're following the, the shield quests that led you to valdraken if you're a new player but also you've got the shield quest that popped up in one point oh seven and 1.2 and 1.2.5 uh, and you know it's it's impossible for you to know which one you should be clicking on to be in the right order no exactly and and so there is this kind of like it, it is kind of a wash and exclamation marks like and also i you know also i started in dragonflight playing with my evoker and then i in this season i've come back as my marksman hunter and uh because of that, there are loads of story quests that I've already done that I don't want to do again. <laughs> yeah. So you know what I mean. And I'm I and one day I am just gonna have to do them again just to get the like the markers off my map because yeah. they're everywhere. Um, in like you know and and so and and yeah so it is it is a lot and um if you use like the you know because there's the the boost as well if you use the mm -hmm. boost up um it also boosts your uh renown with like the oh, major yeah, factions up true. to twenty which again unlocks all of the story yeah uh shielded if you want to call it a little shield story uh linked to all of those as well so it's like 
everything at once. Hugely overwhelming. So I agree, I, yeah. it's like it's it's a lot. It's yeah. And I I was thinking maybe uh, a way around that would be a toggle. Like literally, just when you start the game, mm. if you're starting an alt. Mm -hmm. uh and you get to the dragon isles or if you're coming back or something it's like li they literally just come out and ask you like do you care about the story yeah do you want do you want to go through the story yeah. in which case we will just give you the these quests in order and you know you won't see any more until you've reached that point mm. in the story mm -hmm. or do you not really care you're just here to play with friends yeah. and you want to like in which case <laughs> good luck <laughs> yeah. Boom. Yeah. like because yeah. uh, it's not so much of an issue then if you don't care about the story no who cares put no. them out there like they are now because you just want to be able to like you know gear up and reach everything and have access to everything yeah. and i think that's great yeah. but i think it would be nice to have the option to uh, yeah, to threads of fate it a little bit, honestly, yeah. and to to, yeah. to kind of minimize it and rein it in, and go. No, can you just feed this to me in the right order, and mm -hmm. I'll go through it because I want to see the story. I think that'd be a really good thing to do. I agree, and someone chat has pointed out correctly, like you, like you, you often have to rely on Wowhead and yeah. like webs uh, websites and, to. And that's information which is well, really hard to find on Wowhead. Yeah, exactly, obviously. because it's you know it's in many it's many ways out of out of date because it's stuff that lots of people have done already. So, it yeah, I I, re I feel for people who are coming in now because like on the one hand it's an amazing like the systems are amazing to get you like geared up and to get like get you doing the kind of content that you want to do at the same time uh it, it if you want to do the story it's just like a it's a bit bit much yeah it's a bit confusing. and give uh, and a toggle to have all those main story quests that you've already completed oh, yes, on exactly. one character completed exactly. on an all as well exactly. would be really exactly. good so you're you're bypassing the rewards mm -hmm. you know and there are Fine. rewards for completing those but exactly. whatever man whatever. you're just like boom 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 no, I yeah. think that'd be great. I just clear out that map. Yeah. It's just annoying apart from anything. Okay. And you know, I, I, you know how much I love color coding, right? Mm -hmm. What if there was like another color of shield quests, which were, um, you know, these aren't main story, but they are stuff that kind of just unlock uh, various something. Yeah. So, so these aren't important for literally anything. This is cosmetic stuff. Yeah. So it's yeah. like if there was a green version or Ooh, something. Yeah. Uh, oh, green is already something. But you yeah. know, if there was a different color, I know, I know like a magenta yeah. one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if there was a mauve one. Yeah. Or, or a turquoise Mauve. one. Um, yeah. which uh, or a, a lark's rise one oh, uh, which Lark's. which signified that you know all this does is Cerulean? unlock some like yeah. mini game like time rifts or something like that which which is purely cosmetic in rewards mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. like that so yeah. you know you knew it wouldn't even play on your mind that you weren't clicking on those or something yeah. if that's not yeah. what you're interested in yeah, or if that's right. something that you were specifically looking for yeah. you'd be like oh cool there's there's a whole cosmetic thing over there I can unlock yeah. which would be really cool or just a toggle a toggle would be so nice yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay fair enough yeah yeah and yeah the toggle could be in the map and it just like literally right. in real time affects yeah. what you see yeah which would be cool that would be really so really good. good um yeah no you improved on my idea quite just inst easily. instantaneously <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I, I i agree i think um i think returning to the game at the moment or uh you know after either a patch or god forbid expansion i think a lot of people are it feels to me mm. like a lot of people are doing that right now yeah um yeah i, yeah. I think i feel like it can be overwhelming um and then you suddenly realize that most things are completely not mandatory at all. And, mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, okay. So there is loads of stuff, but there's not loads of stuff I actually need to do, um, which is cool. Uh, yeah. uh, really nice. But um, yeah. yeah, so I, I felt like the tier stuff was good solid yeah uh good kind of liked it yeah yeah it was nice to see him chatting with uh Alex Trazer and Nos Dormu mm -hmm. it was cool that he, he's he's there okay so another thing from that, that quest is um the fact that I know man they were there and they're like wouldn't it be amazing you know to have like a, a proper base for paladins mm -hmm. wouldn't it be really cool if this was a place where all paladins could come and hang out it's like, yeah, so that sounds a bit like uh, Legion Order Halls, doesn't it? Do you think, I don't know, man, I took that as a tiny, tiny little hint that maybe Order Halls could be coming back. Oh, I'm just going to put oh. it out there. I, I've got the video up so I can have a look well, at exactly what was said. If Order Halls come back, then that means that like, you know, you know, class sets come back too, right? Because <laughs> those things are linked. Oh, oh really? <laughs> yeah, in my mind, okay. they, you can't have the Order Hall without like, full 100% class immersion sure sure uh, like give, give me my weapon back too just I, I'll take it yeah give me my like I oh, oh I loved Legion I really loved it I, I yeah. know that's not a controversial opinion here's the line look um all right, all right. yeah yeah uh oh what like a, a casual order hall so, so Justicar Julia Celeste 
who's dressed in in you know recolor judgment armor pretty uh -huh. cool uh -huh. she knows her stuff she says tears rest has everything these paladins need for their mission and plenty of room to grow in the future should they succeed in restoring tear this is before you do the tears Ooh. quest when you first get them to kind of pick it up Ooh. you know plenty of room to grow in the future should they succeed and evie i'll tell you one thing we did succeed so i'm just saying oh. i'm just putting it out there that's all i'm doing i'm just putting it out there what do you think about that eh? what how do you like those onions i, I love those onions yeah i know <laughs> it reminds me I need they, oh ones. those onions making me cry in like, a hopeful yeah, yeah. excited <laughs> hype way <laughs> uh which would be great <laughs> yeah um uh, yeah, so yeah i think i think uh, chat is agreeing that dragonflight is pretty overwhelming if you're if you're yes. coming back or if you're new or definitely, uh, definitely. Wouldn't, i don't think it'd be uh overwhelming if you were completely new because i think it probably does quite a good job of like because obviously you're leveling and so much there as well that's probably helping you out a bit but i think coming back after a patch or two or a different expansion mm -hmm. i bet it's i bet it's pretty difficult yeah mm -hmm. yeah um Oh, so Jessica Celeste is wearing like the classic paladin. Uh, uh, no, she's not. She's wearing the wrath one. Or, well, the, uh, sorry, the wrath sorry. I didn't mean one. I didn't yeah. mean classic. I meant like the the you know the blue one. The, the blue, blue one. Uh, justice set, which you could get in the uh, the pre expansion event for Wrath of the Lich King, and which they did not bring back for the Shadowlands pre expansion event, even though it was set in Northrend, which mm. uh, really mm. pissed me off. Uh, but I now, um, in my mind, it's some things have now cleared up after seeing. Uh, just just a car and remembering why we struggled so hard in Baldur's Gate with justiciars. Oh yeah, seriously. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like, oh right. Good those change are, there, wow. Those are two different things. Let's go back to uh, ten point two point five stuff. Yes, so let's do uh, that. we managed to talk about like the Azeroth in the archives. Basically what we, we agreed is we don't know anything about it, but I think there'll be a good uh, vendor in it. It looks like it's gonna yeah. unlock new kind of solo quests every week, but it looks like there's gonna be a, a group, group con stuff. contingent as well. Yeah. Um and uh I'll bring it up. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, another big feature we're getting is dragon riding available worldwide. Yeah, which, uh, I mean, that's the kind of thing I would expect from a 10.25. Then too. the really exciting thing is the, uh, well, there's two, Gilneas Reclamation. This is what we're going to talk right. about. So, you know, I, I think like some story quests and some kind of continuing of story and things like that is what we would expect um, yeah. from from the point two point five. Uh, patch mm -hmm. but the fact that it is the retaking of gilneas yeah. with gen and what that could potentially mean for the future as well is something that justifiably has got people extremely excited people are people are very very hyped about this and there's been there's been some like data mining around it there's been this like uh i'm not sure if this is actually real but i <laughs> think it pops up but the actual the names of like the oh can you uh, can you uh zoom in on yeah music? yeah yeah uh which is the uh, complete the gilneas reclamation storyline which is speak to gen Greyman and stormwind or calia menethil and silver silver pine forest to begin the storyline and it's all like to gilneas so this is spoilers right here yeah, big, this is big, data mining big data this mining this is uh this is like the names of the of the parts of the quests yeah that you are gonna see so um uh so so interesting names a crusade of red scarlet blood crushing the crusade but it's like so i think we know who's in gilneas right now right right because right. it's like oh like you know, the, the thing is like go with gen to gilneas to retake it but it's not as empty as he thought yeah, well who's i there? think we know like, who's what? there well, well, yeah. Um, so, hello, you know, Scarlet Crusade. But uh, yeah, so that's um, that's 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 fun, right? Yeah. Like, and so and, what? And the last quest in in that uh, kind of run is called "Beginning a New Dawn," mm -hmm. uh, which sounds hopeful. Doesn't sound like we failed to take back Gilneas. Put it that way. No, no. Um, so, what happens when we retake Gilneas? Uh, I think it turns into something very similar to what like a the ruins of Lordron is now for the undead, mm -hmm. which is basically nothing. Uh, you know, like your oh. your uh, NPCs, your important yeah. forsaken NPCs are hanging around there. You can go back there. Mm -hmm. You have control of the place. You can wander around and RP and stuff. But yeah. as far as like it being a, a functioning hub, mm -hmm. I yeah, I don't see it happening. But maybe I mean, look, here's so you know, right? Okay, we'll get onto this, but maybe not in patch uh, ten to five. But before this expansion is out, 
there is definitely some more big, big surprises coming. Right. Like, huge. Yeah. Uh, they, they did mean... we say Scarlet Dawn? We meant Scarlet Crusade, sorry. No, we said uh, Scarlet Crusade. I thought we'd say Scarlet yeah. Crusade. But, you know, sometimes I just say things which are just flat out yeah. wrong. So I meant definitely meant to say Scarlet Crusade. Oh, yeah. okay, New Dawn, the Scarlet Dawn. Dawn. Yeah. I see. Very funny. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I don't know. I, I, and I think just having it there with kind of... It's so symbolic having Gilneas back mm -hmm. and, you know, just the potential of it turning into something later on. Mm -hmm. You know, at the very latest, you'd have thought midnight and kind of, uh, you know, zones in that kind of half of the Eastern Kingdoms mm -hmm. will be getting reworked at that point. Yeah. It would certainly seem like a, a really obvious thing to have uh, uh, Gilneas properly reworked for that you'd have thought um and and this would certainly be a really good place to start you know yeah um so yeah who knows who knows um and, and so in terms of oh there is some story that's not a surprise um uh, no for, for 1025 but the fact that they are doing gilneas uh just about exactly almost to the day an expansion after we did that stuff with Kalia oh, oh, um, again at right. the end of Shadowlands as right, well course, and Kalia yeah. kind of sent a letter to Gen saying yo Hey. We're going to sort out Gilneas for you. Taking so, yeah, Forsaken yeah, got their gaff yeah. back. Uh, you know, Gilneans getting their gaff back. Night Elves famously getting their gaff back. Mm, um, really? and, and, you know, <laughs> building work has started there in patch 10.25 as well. Yeah. We did a little fly round and we, we did some far sight and stuff. And there are loads of Ooh, nice new high red nice. uh, night elf kind of buildings. High, getting built high rise there. night elf buildings. High red, wow. not high rise. You, just, like, really you, know, you know night elf buildings high aren't rise. high rise. They no, are. They all follow the same. They, they, well, <laughs> yeah, I guess that, that's just high. <laughs> like a plane isn't high rise, it's just high in the air. Yeah, but trees like, are, they grow from the ground. Yeah, yeah, sure. Everything. Okay, yeah. okay. But like, yeah. and, and, yeah. but yeah. anyway, though, anyway, I thought it was a brilliant joke. <laughs> no, I think it's, yeah. I'm just Thanks. stifling because I'm trying to be, uh, just... <laughs> I'm trying to be professional. You know? <laughs> so like, I, if I, if I let myself go uh -huh. and laughed as much as I wanted to at that oh, joke, there would be you're... shit and piss everywhere oh. right now. <laughs> Explicit content warning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right. So, yeah, so that is so that is coming uh, in 10.25 as well. I'm really excited to see what that actually looks like. Yeah. And, you know, I miss Gen. You know, I want to see him again. Yeah. Uh, again. Love Gen. Uh, I love again. Gen. Um, again. I, I think also that will probably I I think that'll probably relegate Gen to uh, Gilmean <laughs> duty, you know, which means we won't be seeing him in many very high res CGI cutscenes, which is good because he costs a lot to animate. Oh, yeah. His little like rippling. With all his little hair and stuff. Oh, yeah. oh, oh man. Remember, he is oh, so expensive. Like, I mean, I, God, I remember like the uh, RIP BlizzCon, uh, you know, panels where people talk about like animating every little like you know bit of fur on on gen gray yeah, oh, yeah yeah oh man anyway we anyway saw, we saw him in the avengers assemble cinematics that was nice wasn't it <laughs> yeah, yeah. uh yeah and it's always fun to hang around again i do like him yeah. he's cool he's yeah, the best I'm gonna, boy i'm gonna he's say great. this once more i can't wait to see him again <gasps> ah, i said so, that like 10 times and you missed it every time i i again just stifling <laughs> <laughs> so the big big surprise about the patch though obviously is follower dungeons i haven't yes. had your opinion on follower dungeons on this channel yet evie what are you thinking oh my god i think they're great i think they're such a good tool to have like i'm gonna use them when i do like what you know try healing or tanking or whatever yeah, like man. i'm gonna use them to do stuff that i'm too embarrassed to ask my guildies to help me with hey yeah you know what like I mean? seriously so genuinely like and i don't want to everyone is you know people are really helpful one i know I, we're really lucky we have a super friendly super involved guild where people are always lending hands with like keys and stuff and uh they're great and but sometimes like i actually don't even want to ask and this is in those situations where it's like hey you know i can just i can just run this on my own i can learn like the, the best routes i can just learn how to play my class properly yeah. um and having it so it only goes up to normal is that right so just normal dungeons uh yeah so normal dungeons which is you know obviously useless in terms of uh gear mm -hmm. and, and what have you um and you get put in there and you've got your whole gang is there from exile's reach mm -hmm. so uh captain garrick who is the best tank ever by the way is he? um yeah and uh you you uh, she and and you have um uh, three DPS. You, you have an elemental shaman. You have a uh, beast mastery hunter, and you have a fire mage. 
mage mm -hmm. um and should you need it there's a druid healer as well um and i think it's the hunter that disappears if you're a dps um is my uh okay in my experience Makes sense. Right. um and uh that is three ranged dps which is a bit mm, okay. a bit strange that's my that's my one funny thing with that uh but otherwise yeah and it's great you know the mage puts down a mage table at the beginning of the dungeon and um when i was healing it uh, I had the choice of either leading the way through the dungeon myself mm -hmm. or clicking on a little thing and the tank taking over. And as long as you stay within range of the tank, they will be running on and, mm. and uh, like pulling stuff. And she's a paladin, of course, so you always see exactly what she's pulling with her shield, right? So cool. there's no, it's very visually easy to kind of follow what's going on. And she'll go and she'll pull a little pack and then she'll come back and draw them back to you and stuff. Um, I ran out of mana at one point and she stopped and was like i'll just wait for you to get some mana oh, man. that, and then we that's went on not realistic i uh, no, no uh so and, and the entire experience was was brilliant exactly yeah she didn't even like you know kind of leave the dungeon when when we wiped it was wild <laughs> yeah like really really strange oh, oh, um, and it was it was super fun realism. and you know the roots are uh interesting <laughs> through the dungeon. and obviously right. it's you know compared to most normal dungeons that most players do it's very very slow okay. because but that's in part because most normal dungeons that you do it, you don't even touch the sides no, you, know? you, don't. you, you slip through that thing like a grease them. balloon yeah. you've got a whole bunch of uh, people massively over geared from it you're bopping through the tank is running on pulling literally everything in the dungeon you're melting it all down if, if you get a chance to stop and look at anything mm -hmm. or kind of experience anything other than a, a, a grand stomp then you're very very lucky mm -hmm. so obviously that's much slower than that yeah. but it's not slow compared to you know how a normal dungeon is probably intended to go no, really yeah um so it's never going to be obviously if you want to do it for for kind of xp or something like sure, that that's you can story. it's yeah. not going to be very efficient no um compared to just queuing up and um i, I guess maybe you could save time there's an argument that you'd save time on queues maybe mm -hmm. if you're a dps because it is obviously an insta queue mm -hmm. uh so if the queues are pretty long for, for other dungeons maybe mm. that would kind of be efficient but it's interesting because yeah normal normal dungeons are just made to deliver a bit of story right like you do them yeah to progress the story well, to learn true. a bit more and that's you know like once they go above that they're made for something else completely well, else but it's cool that you get to do that like at a slow pace and actually experience yeah. it that way you know at the, at the beginning you can only access four of them anyway um and because they are the the capstones of each zone story mm. uh, which is great and mm -hmm. i always make a point when i s start a new expansion of i go into the new dungeons when the story requires it oh always you know? i yeah, never i, I, I never the do them before the yeah. Story. yeah oh always i i always do that the first time around because otherwise it doesn't doesn't make sense. Yeah, and it's great because, you know, everyone is even at like a normal level. Mm -hmm. Everyone is, most people are seeing the dungeons for the first time. Not some, I think more people play PTR than ever before now as well. So mm. I have noticed in recent expansions, people know what they're doing a bit more. Yeah. Um, which is disappointing because it's nice if you're all muddling through together and, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's never hard. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I feel like now what this does is it, 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 it completely weaves normal dungeons into the fabric of the story mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. particularly the leveling story yeah you know because now it's like you can make at the moment you finish a zone and then the, the quest that actually sends you into the dungeon is an optional quest you know you don't have to do it you can just move on mm -hmm. it's not a shield quest the story will progress whether you finish that bit of story or not mm -hmm. and now you can just make that a shield quest you can make it part of the mandatory storyline and it's, it essentially becomes in terms of leveling story just a really fun good scenario yeah I, I love and that. I, I see no harm in that at all i think it's great i think it's i think it's so cool and i am going to like i'm going to use it you know in the future and i'm really how did it feel doing it like did you super yeah. fun i mean to be honest the, the fun came mostly from the novelty mm -hmm. and the fact that a certain glee in the fact that it worked so well you know yeah. it was like wow this is so great like, and like the entire experience was incredibly enjoyable um i mean because because the last time we've seen kind of like party ai like that was was what like islands <laughs> uh yeah right? yeah yeah exactly um, and ai everyone says, says ai i say ai as well um but uh obviously it's not ai it's scripted it's of, like you uh, know, yeah which course. is why you can't just add other kind of uh classes to it they need to be scripted individually and stuff yeah and, of course of course and, you know it's a whole lot of work because people are one of the things people are talking about right now is the idea that obviously best case scenario in an ideal world what you would have is uh your warband characters your alts being in the party instead of the exiles reach people. well that's like the conclusion a lot of people jumped to oh you sound like... you sound very no no about that no 
well, no, no, I'm no, no, that wasn't my, I didn't mean to sound no, no. I went to say, well, like, you know, that is, <laughs> well, well, as it turns would you, out. Is that something you would like? Yes. Okay, Who cool. wouldn't like that? Well, because I'm I, trying to be cautious look, because I, it sounds incredible. I can and I don't want to hype myself problems. up too much. I foresee a lot of problems with it. That's all. Uh, okay, it's I don't want to know about the like, problems. Yeah, obviously it's I don't want to know idea. about the problems. You want to know about the problems? No, I don't want oh, to know, know about the problems. Okay, problems. Fine, I just want to be there and I want it just to look like me and my, my dudes, me and my friends out, you know, as a party, as a proper party, just doing the stuff. Yeah. Okay, what are the problems? So many problems. Oh my like. god, maybe maybe new uh new members of your party could be literal like quest or achievement rewards, you know? How uh, cool would that be? Maybe that just makes And I mean me think I mean of... other other characters. So maybe like you could do like some optional quest line and you unlock like Jaina to be in your party or something. Oh. When you do when you do follower dungeons or you know uh like you know something like that maybe not maybe. people of the power level of Jaina but maybe someone like Rexar or maybe anything anything where I have to like unlock a, a character to do a task for me just makes me think of like follower tables or whatever those were yeah mission tables well, look, which so, I don't so want what, ever what it would to be do is, again it, it would be a skin <laughs> for your mate yeah just a, yeah right yeah. so so yeah. uh yeah you could get Rexar to come in instead of uh your hunter that could be fun you could, yeah uh that could be you could fun Happy boy to come in instead of your elemental shaman. Okay, okay, okay. You know, okay. you could get uh, who's a famous paladin. You could get um, you know, what's his name? Uther. Uther can't make it. Yeah, maybe. Why not? Why can't he make it? He can't. He's he's busy being dead. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> um, <laughs> Just like you know, yeah. bring, bring them all out. Yeah. Wheel him out. Reanimate him. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I mean, there's a. I, I don't think the war ban thing will ever happen, though. I, no. I just cause these too many problems. I think it's just a. It's just. So I mean, what would you? What would? What would it be like? You know, at the moment, there's only like a few classes actually kind of scripted in. Mm -hmm. So you, the people from your war band would have to be those classes. Right. Yeah. And then but... it's like, well, okay, what gear are they wearing? Are they scaled to have the same gear as the people that would have been in the follow dungeon, or yeah. are they wearing their gear? No, and that's the thing. They would have to wear like a set. They would have to yeah, wear their yeah. like set dungeon gear. That and then it's like. Do they get XP yeah. from this run as well? Yeah. Because then it's basically like multi-boxing um, for yeah. leveling and stuff. And that, no, just, they won't get it's XP. It's a whole can yeah. of worms. It would have to be like purely kind of a cosmetic thing, but even yeah. then it's quite tricky. And okay, a, I get it. I it get it. Like, it feels like a whole lot of work for something that would basically be like a novelty one and done It would be really not. People. It would be really, like, yes, yeah. I like, would probably do it once or twice to see it and be like, that was awesome and then never do it again. However... Even though I think that, and, you know, even though it would be tens of thousands of developer hours to make it happen just for two normal dungeons <laughs> in leveling, for me, I still think they should do it. I'm just saying, I think it would be worth it. You know, I'm just, yeah. they're going to be going through okay. their graphs and stuff. Like that. That's going to cost us tens of thousands of hours. Most people are going to do it like once or twice. Well, I say... Yes, but what, what a once or twice. I'm going to have so much fun in that once or twice. <laughs> It's going to be so cool. Yeah. Um, even even if it is just a visual thing, yeah. right? But they would still have to be the same classes because they are casting spells and stuff that do damage. And, you know, they are scripted to cast certain spells at certain times mm -hmm. in certain situations. So, uh, you know, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, good. it's one of those things which is a lot harder than I think we give it credit for. But that is not me saying they shouldn't do it. In fact, far from it. I think they should do it, <laughs> even though it's a complete waste of man hours. Do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Done. <laughs> uh, so, and, and the thing about follower dungeons is, uh, I mean, okay. So another thing that the people are bringing up, would you would you go for heroic uh, heroic follower dungeons if that was a thing? I don't know. Maybe, maybe heroic, mm -hmm. but like no higher than that. Absolutely right, not yeah. higher than that. Well, now and, of course heroic counts towards your vault. Yeah. So I don't. So, so in that not, case, it's not nothing. Probably not. Yeah. Um. In that case, prob. Oh, of course. That's so weird. Hasn't what level does? What le oh, but then delves yeah. count towards your vault in they Nexus do. Okay. They're single player. Right. So maybe maybe this is right because they're adding uh, world content like mm -hmm. in solo stuff to to that to that bottom row. And then just like what did they do? did they just scrap the PvP? Uh, like, uh, yeah, basically uh, PvP like, isn't oops, in the vault anymore. Bye. But um, everything is going to be on conquest okay. vendors, which is what everyone wants. It, anyway. it makes so perfect that's sense. That's a big big win because you're like targeting well. yeah, stuff exactly, very specifically yeah. there. So it makes it, it makes sense that that's gone. But it was quite funny seeing that reveal. 
Um, so maybe, maybe like up to heroic, if that if that becomes part of your. But then, well, and then, the then it does start getting in the way of LFG. I think in that case, and and likewise, yeah. people are talking about follower raids, and quite apart from how much harder that is to do than follower dungeons from a from a. Oh kind of, yeah, and I don't think that's never going to happen. Well, also that's... LFR exists. Yeah, exactly. And, and, yeah, and the, the thing yeah, is, yeah. like, you can go into LFR and you can see all the story of LFR, mm -hmm. and and you know, you can say, well, that that's just the same as queuing for a normal dungeon, but it's not because you can queue for LFR as like a healer and to a lesser extent a tank, but you go under the radar in LFR. You're one of 40 people, mm -hmm. you know, like everyone's shooting and doing stuff. And, mm -hmm. and whereas with a dungeon, you are that much more exposed. If you want to learn to be a healer mm -hmm. or you want to learn to be a tank and you go into a dungeon and you don't know what you're doing, like there's no escape. You are, everyone no. knows that you don't know what you're doing. Exactly. And, and however they decide to treat you is, is it could go either way, you know, unfortunately. Um, um, and with, the, with LFR, there's this element of like group learning, you know, pe yeah. people are generally like, well, <laughs> not always, but there's usually someone who's like, okay, should we, tr let's do this. Or like you, 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 yeah, it, it, there's like leeway to make mistakes in LFR in a way yeah. that, it wouldn't be in in, uh, in dungeons. Um, so yeah, and I think the best, the second best thing about uh, follow dungeons is its its place as a learning tool for people who maybe do want to get into mm. uh, healing or tanking or mm -hmm. picking up a, a spec that they are not familiar with or something like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think I think that's like super exciting. For me, there are the narrative implications as well because obviously then the dungeons can be mandatory story content. Yeah. But it does bring us one step closer to the thing that I've been banging on about, banging my drum for for yeah. ages, which I'm sure they would implement tomorrow if they could just press a button uh -huh. and make it happen. It's not like I thought of it really. What's that, Tally? Um, it's the path of the curator, oh, which is yeah. you know this works for chromy time, mm -hmm. but also for the new player experience going into a new expansion. You know the idea that you pick an expansion, or if you're a new player, you're given an expansion to level through mm -hmm. to at the moment it's 60 when you go into the current content and then you and then you you play through the leveling of the current content mm -hmm. um and at the moment what that translates as it's like okay i'm doing chromie time so i choose wrath or no i don't i choose legion mm -hmm. obviously to level mm -hmm. through um with my with my new character yeah. and so I, I do exiles reach i get sent to legion and i do two and a half zones two and a half leveling zones in legion and i am done like, and I get literally teleported out of the Broken Isles, you know, against my will to uh, the current content. Yeah. You know? Right. And I, I, and I can't do that. I haven't completed a story. I don't know what's going on. I've right. just done some leveling zones and stuff right. like that. And wouldn't it be better to have a curated shield quest line mm -hmm. through... Uh, through the entire story of of uh, Legion, so like a curated, truncated mm -hmm, quest mm -hmm, line that mm -hmm. takes you through all the major plot all beats from all of the patches, seven point two and yeah. seven point three as well, and through dungeons and relevant raid encounters as I well. I love that. I and love that. Follower dungeons is definitely one step towards that happening you yeah, know because yeah. you could you could easily turn certain boss fights into a follower dungeon yeah if you wanted to right you know um and you go in there and you do it so you know you would you would go in and you just do the fight against uh avatar of sargeras and then going into kill, kill jaden's ship and doing that as literally as part of the story mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all the entire raid who cares but you know those two you would definitely oh, need. Yeah, and then argus appears in the sky and then you go to argus and then yeah. you, you you do the final and you do the final boss fight so yeah. you ding and this would be very easy to do mm. like you ding when you kill argus so yeah. you've completed a or, or you know in the epilogue stuff after you kill argus right. so you have completed a entire expansion storyline on your character as mm -hmm. you level mm -hmm. um and then you go into the current content because then you have a place in the world then you belong yeah you know you have had uh, a full adventure before you get started on the new I content i really like that i um i just want to say cheers to wool in my pocket Thank oh, you so much. thank you for the cheer wall in my pocket. Thank That's you. very awesome. Thank you. People have been very generous on these. What I think, I think what we might do in future episodes mm -hmm. uh, is that if if you uh, if you are tempted to do like a, a cheer or a, they call them super chats, don't they? Super right? chat. On if you want to do a super chat and, and ask a question, we'll pin them and then we'll do a little uh, question 
answering bit at the very end of each stream. That's a great idea. What do you think about that? eh? I think it's a really good idea. So we'll do that for next episode. Impromptu Q and A at the end. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think that'd be a nice way of uh, ending each uh, each podcast. Yeah. Um. So the so the thing is, I just want to touch on this very quickly because I know that we've got uh, cooking and stuff to do for Thanksgiving tonight. We gotta cook, baby. Follower Dungeons is the thing that really surprised people about Mm 10.2.5. And it's a thing that people were like, wow, that is a huge feature. Mm -hmm. Like massive, as in that is an expansion box feature, pretty much. Dare I say it's game changing. It is game changing. This (laughs) changes everything oh, just full of- normal dungeon related <laughs> yeah and but it's huge and it's got people really excited and most i think most people won't ever use it but i just love that no, it's there and i think, I think it's brilliant it's, i think it's really well, really valuable people for listen something. to this podcast because no, we are all raiding just, chance just, man. Just, yeah just exactly one percent but no yeah no i think it's so cool and super useful and yeah and it is a huge change with as we've explored like huge implications Potential implications. Huge implications. For well, how we play the game. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it's it, it's the kind of thing where you think to yourself, I am personally amazed that this was not mentioned at BlizzCon. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. they are, BlizzCon is to, like, load up on hype and to get people excited about what's coming. And granted, they wanted to talk about the war. They had a lot to talk about, right? So they had the Worlds of Saga and, and the war within, the war beneath, um, all mm-hmm. happening, uh, to tell us about. But I still find it wild that they did not mention follower dungeons uh at blizzcon i know and i mean they meant they mentioned delves they mentioned like a you know followers yeah. follow like in other situations but not follower dungeons which is like a very specific thing absolutely crazy yeah. and you know I, I i i took this idea to twitter and i wrote on twitter um the fact that they did not mention follower dungeons is basically what I just said now. The fact that they did not mention follower dungeons is wild and makes me wonder what else they didn't mention. Hmm. Bang a tweet, by the way. Yeah, uh, a thousand a, likes. One point two thousand likes <laughs> on that. Print it. Put it. Put that in the binder. Show that to the kids. Cut that out. There you go. And stick it on the wall. That's the equivalent, isn't it? It's like, yeah, I was, uh, you know, your well dad. Done, daddy. Your dad. What did you do in the war, daddy? I was pretty big on social media had some absolute bangers oh you should have seen mm-hmm. the one when we got married mm-hmm. yeah that, that was a good one to be fair <laughs> you should have seen you should have seen my two twitters one always tells the truth one always lies <laughs> off the chart um anyway so you know i wrote this on twitter and, and thought not, not, not much else about it but you know like many creators we are followed on twitter by quite a lot of wow devs you know just keeping tabs you know and most of the time they they stay silent in the background Mm -hmm. uh but sometimes they they kind of comment on your on your tweets and stuff like that and quite a few blizzard devs commented on this tweet Mm. um including really interesting holly longdale who is uh you'll recognize her of the beautiful jacket from blizzcon she's the vice president and executive producer of world of warcraft so basically like us you know there's one person above her in the hierarchy of, uh, of World of Warcraft, and that's John Height, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And she responded, now you can, you can see it on screen, but I'll, I'll tell you to the listeners here, with what emoji would you call that? Uh, shifty eyes. Shifty eyes emoji. Mm. And that made me go, mm. 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 And then Zorvrix, who is the, uh, I have to make my text a bit smaller, sorry. <laughs> Zorvrix, who is the lead game producer in World of Warcraft, huh. responded with, or do you want to read it? Bookmarking this post for later. And that made me go, hmm. And then Jordan Powers, who is lead prop artist in World of Warcraft, responded with... <laughs> Golden Retriever turning around looking... Uh, suspicious. Suspicious and smug <laughs> gif. <laughs> and then Bex, who we know is an animator at World of Warcraft, responded with... Smug, suspicious looking cat image. <laughs> <laughs> and then Muffinus... Uh, associate game director responded with hmm, emoji <laughs> and then uh haughty chicken she's welcome anywhere then marissa who is uh the producer at blizzard entertainment responded with uh, uh um i uh, raised eyebrows big eyes dude gif uh, that's not any old dude <laughs> that is that is is that keenan from keenan and kel Oh, he's on Saturday Night Live these days. He's like a grown-up. 
he's he's he loves orange soda, man. Does he? Yeah, totally. Oh, okay. That's not just any guy. Oh, sorry. That's I a comedy legend known. of my childhood. Okay, I'm really sorry. Okay. No, it's um, all right. It's fine. We're not finished. Yeah. Jen and Eric, who work in the uh, um uh, the uh social media partnership. Yeah. Uh, yeah. At wow. Social team social at Wow team. responded with um pretty influencer girl going. Ee! <laughs> yeah. uh, we're not even finished Anne Stickney <laughs> who is the lead narrative designer for WoW senior uh, narrative designer for WoW responded with 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 um with girl making the uh face. <laughs> yeah. We're not finished, Evertel. Kat, who is the game designer working on Dungeons and Raids in World of Warcraft, responded with What's her face from Saturday Night Live? Like, hmm, yeah. Uh and that's it. Then we ran out of wow. Dev. There were no that's every wow dev, I think, uh responding to our tweet with suspicious uh, responses which you know i don't know you, I, you know me evie i don't like to get my hopes up and i don't like to over speculate right yeah. but i would i would say that it seems likely yeah what's it, the original tweet again uh, <laughs> <laughs> the original tweet was it's wild to me that they didn't mention uh follower dungeons at blizzcon and it makes me wonder what else they didn't mention what else are yeah. they hiding um, uh, uh, Moku Meku, uh, thank you so much for the cheer. Um, as someone who's disabled, follower dungeons are a godsend. I have slow visual processing reflexes. Dungeons are currently too much for me. That's like a really yeah, awesome, exactly, like, and, and uh, awesome the, the, point, the accessibility yeah. uh, kind of level is something which selfishly and and kind of blinkedly i don't always mm. think about but mm -hmm. yeah um uh, of course it's like yeah. opens up a whole new part of the game to so many people and yeah. that's just incredible absolutely hooray um so there's definitely something big coming something probably big. not in in two five but something at least i would have said on the level of uh follower dungeons mm -hmm. now you know what i think it is i know what you think it is think are you gonna are you gonna tell I, everyone I'll say, what you think i think it is? i think it's player housing I think we're gonna have I think we're gonna have our first little eek of player housing before next expansion. That's I insane. Just, look, okay, so there's <laughs> do you wanna do you wanna be, do quickly go over the stars aligning for this? Yeah, tell me. Tell so me. the fact that all these very me. suspicious things or responses on the tweet is mm -hmm. is obviously signs that's, of something. That's one. That's so one. but I look at I've got this theory about about war bands. Okay. They said that they had to take apart a whole certain way that the game worked literally destroy it and then literally put it back together again it, right? to make war bands happen right mm -hmm. so all the kind of cross uh, account stuff that could happen would happen and i've got this little theory in my head that the the stuff that they had to take apart and rebuild they didn't actually do for war bands they did it so they it's because it just happens to also be stuff they have to do to make player housing happen and warbands is just something else they can make happen as almost like a result of the work that they are doing for player housing it's like right. we have to smash this with a hammer we have to rebuild it to make player mm -hmm. housing happening mm -hmm. i think it's worth it let's do it and then at some point they were like you know we can actually do cross account everything with this now mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. you know for, for for everything so you know an easy we can we can do a warbands thing what do you mm -hmm. think and I don't know. I've just got this theory that war bands are possible because they set out to make player housing happen I know, and the work they yeah. did for that. And I mean, I'm like, probably completely wrong, but it's just like my I, head. Camping, a, right? I, can, I can see. I can see what you're getting at there, and yeah. like, and how uh, like evocative was that war bands announcement at BlizzCon and seeing that picture of oh. you and your party sitting around your campfire, oh, so like with good. your supplies, with your like. It wasn't just anyone's camp, you know. Yeah. It's yours. Yeah. And uh with like little bits that maybe other camps don't have, right? Like oh. that that really you know, it set the set the like the wheels in motion. It would be so a little nice, bit, right? yeah. But then and, and then I think, you know, we, we know we've got lots more uh story probably based around Amir Jasil and stuff like that. Although they are starting to hint at uh, next expansion already. Um if you uh, in the in some of the post raid uh kind of quest lines, there's a bit where Thrall and Jane are talking and they they are discussing the voice mm -hmm. um that they mm -hmm. are hearing which is obviously you know set up for next expansion and stuff like that but we've just saved the world tree amir Jasil has just appeared in the dragon isles which is where new players will level through mm. next expansion 
which is useful, isn't it? Because when new players level through the Dragon Isles, they are introduced, they get the quests introducing them and training them on a major gameplay feature, Dragon Riding, mm -hmm. which are Dragon Isles quests. Mm -hmm. So very handy that right. they start in Dragon Isles. And you know, if I was going to put in another major gameplay feature that would need quests explaining it and training, I'd probably put it in the Dragon Isles as well, because that is probably going to be the new player experience for the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. My prediction is mm -hmm. that Dragon Isles will remain the new player uh, expansion beyond the War Within mm -hmm. and through the whole of the World Soul Saga, because it's the expansion where a Riddicron is introduced who is right. going to be one of the major antagonists like you know of this whole arc, the story right? yeah. actually kind of starts in Dragonflight yeah um and it makes perfect sense for new players to start there mm -hmm. um and you know if player housing was going to be a thing it would be very handy to have all like the training quests and stuff that teach you how to do it mm -hmm. just like dragon riding mm -hmm. in Dragonflight and mm -hmm. on the Dragon Isles mm -hmm. so we've just saved this tree a Mirgisil already has its own separate phase, you know, because I see it, you don't. No. When we're in uh, Naran no. Plains. Don't when I go it. to Knuckle Defensive and do that dungeon, yeah. I see it. Oh, it's okay. there. That's you cool. don't. Yeah, That's it's cool. really, really yeah. cool. Um, and so it's already got a separate phase. They are already building new buildings there. You've got this whole little mm. mini zone where the entire narrative and story around that zone is they are building it right now. <laughs> They're literally building a city there. So and, exciting. you know, we just saved the place mm -hmm. and everyone just spent an entire party telling me how thankful they are. And wouldn't the obvious thing to be like, hey... We're re and also, you are not allowed to get onto Amir Jassil in the PTR right now. They don't nice. want you walking around it. You get teleported out straight away. So all we've seen of it, we've seen through doing Farsight and going through it with no NPCs or anything. Mm. Um, and so there is this thing of, hey, thanks for saving the tree. And in my head, it would just be like, you are always welcome at Amir Jassil. In fact... Do us the honor of accepting this humble abode so you can come and visit whenever you want. Oh, and this is stop, your little starter thing. Faith no. in uh in in Amir Jassil. And you know, it just gets you started mm. on the whole player housing thing, which yeah. then they can properly kind of expand on and do in the next Yeah. Season. It's even to places like Gilneas, which we'll be reclaiming. Yeah. Right? Yeah, like, exactly. Like well, exactly. We're totally. re reclaiming and these these places. Exactly. They're abandoned now. Maybe we need someone to go and fix them up and uh, totally. set, set up totally. camp. And, and you know, the, the theme of renewal mm -hmm. and all of these places getting reworked. <gasps> Seeds so, of renewal. Health alas getting reworked oh. uh, in midnight. We know that's happening. So yeah. perfect opportunity to put some player housing in there. Mm -hmm. Lovely uh, player housing in Northrend and Last Titan. You can have your apartment in Grizzly Hills and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I mean tell me i mean i've had worse ideas right I, i've had i've had worse have. predictions i think you have i i like it i i love the idea and like oh i love how they play with like the patch names and stuff like you know this is the one where they're planting the seeds for yeah, like for, yeah, yeah. for even more right kind of like exciting features to come yeah I, and also uh, yeah. gives me a, like a, a kind of a sexy cue line uh for like the entire you know every every night i can be like hey evie yeah got some seeds of renewal for you yeah and you're like i too also want to do a mythic plus tally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. so yeah and i i think if they did player housing that would be the way to do it i think they should you can't do something like um uh final fantasy 14 housing in wow unfortunately mm -hmm. i don't think it would work anyway mm -hmm. i don't think it'd be the best thing for wow i think you know people want their apartment in, in stormwind people want their apartment in grizzly hills you know they don't want a separate whole kind of thing which isn't actually in the game world mm -hmm. uh there are advantages to that you have your neighbors and stuff yeah like, big big disadvantages as well so i think you'd want to copy the um the uh eso style mm -hmm. housing i think as long think. as my guildies can come and visit like because what's the point oh, yeah, of having of what's like, the point of having a house you can take them all in there yeah what's yeah. the point of having a house if i can't show it yeah, off to exactly, anyone exactly exactly um, but you know you're not allowed to say player housing because i know you think it's probably not anyway but what would be your prediction for this a secret thing which is obviously being planned oh. and obviously is going to happen what's your prediction I, it would have been player housing maybe just like more 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 kind of zones being revamped like world yeah. revamp kind of like coming sooner than we'd expect mm -hmm. like like actual proper revamping um maybe yeah i could yeah, see that possibly uh, do you think WoW is going to go back to what it did best and taking the good from others and trying to make it better? 
Um, if you're in the Akron area one day, we'd uh, love to buy you. Cleveland, C L E oh, Cleveland. Cleveland. The Bears suck, man. Yeah, no. I'll come to Cleveland. Browns. I'll the Browns. Have... Oh, sorry, the Browns suck and the Bears. I hate them all. I'm Steelers <laughs> till I die. Yeah, yeah, we'll uh, we'll come for a drink in uh, in Cleveland, but we ain't watching no Browns game unless unless the Steelers are playing them. <laughs> exactly. Happy Turkey Day to you too, John. <laughs> Happy Turkey Day to you. Yeah, well, I mean, and, and that would be uh, a great example. I mean, and so WoW is, is mm. in Dragonflight, has done a lot of kind of doing what it does best, as in stealing stuff from other games and doing their thing, right? So uh, Dragon Riding is absolutely that. It's mm -hmm. famously just Griffin Riding from um, Guild Wars. Uh, and it feels brilliant and it's great. And I think they've done their usual blizzard special source kind of job on it yeah. um and yeah if they were to do player housing they could do a lot worse in my opinion than just to copy the eso player housing and, and do that uh because i think that would fit mm. like a charm Makes in, sense, in wow it? yeah and, yeah. and do their wow version of that which hopefully would be really really good yeah um yeah we'll hopefully, the dream. hopefully so anyway so what do you think about the, the theories that uh it could be like a little dungeon or like a mini raid or something like a group instance so what if there's a dungeon um literally a whole new dungeon and that made up one of the Mythic Plus dungeons for the Fated season as well. So there is at least one new thing. Like, an, are you saying there's a new dungeon? I, no, I mean, that could be the secret thing. Could be. Um, I, I've heard that as a theory, and it's it's a theory that I find oh, yeah, kind of likely, I guess. Could be. Probably the most, like, straightforward way, like, without, like, upturning everything and, and, and you know, adding in player housing. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, that seems like the most kind of like sensible, <laughs> sensible addition. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so uh, like, I, I could see that happening as well. But um, yeah, yeah, go sports team. Go sp oh, uh, you mentioned the sports. You've set them all off. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned sports on Thanksgiving. Well, the saddest, so this is what happens, right? So sports were basically invented so that like guys have something to talk about with their girlfriend's dads. Like that's it. It's just like an instant bonding thing for guys and their girlfriend's dads. Traditionally, I find. And it's it's certainly worked with me and your dad. Mm. It's like still pretty much the only thing we talk about. Yeah. <laughs> and it's brilliant. No, that's unfair. We have yeah. a good relationship. No, but at first it was just an easy way to kind of talk about stuff and to bond and to like, you know. Yeah. Okay. Tally, where are the Steelers from? Pittsburgh. Hey! Obviously, they're my local team. Well, yeah. When you when you spend as much time in uh, Erie, Pennsylvania as I do, yeah. it's all about the Steelers, man. It's true. Steelers till I die. You don't choose your team. Your team chooses you. Yeah. And I'm Steelers till I die. Heck yeah. Yeah. And it's Proud fun because I became a Steelers fan. And, and uh, your dad had no choice but to become a Swansea City fan. He in, did. In I know. Bless him. That and poor he, guy. Like, I was like, you don't have wear... to do this. Oh, he has to wear my like his like little Swansea City T-shirt, and at first he was really excited. Back when you guys were doing well, like what, <laughs> yeah, like, we were in the Premier League at the time. He was ago, like, yeah, ten years ago, and he was like, hey, hey, on the up. And now it's not so great. And now every time we talk, he's like, oh man, Swansea City, huh? <laughs> <laughs> like he thinks that I'm going to be upset. He thinks I don't have a lifetime of having to watch Swansea City lose. Like he thinks I'm going to be sad. I'm like, dude, I warned you. This is what it was going to be like, my friend. Like this is what I told you. <laughs> and and I'll be like, dude, we we won last weekend. He's like, yeah, but you're not doing well though. And I'm like, no, but we won. It's Chill like, out. <laughs> yeah, but you know, yeah. No, this is why you have to. This is why you have to hitch your wagon to a good team like the Pittsburgh Steelers. I don't think uh, your dad watches our videos, does he? No, I don't think he does. No, my dad does. He does. He, for the, I mean, for the he, ad revenue. He, he, he clicks on them and then he turns the volume down <laughs> and i'm like dad we do fine them. mate honestly like, he's like, like no i'm gonna give you that one more view yeah, i appreciate like, it no, dad I, but I you don't that. have to like that. honestly we don't need you to yeah. <laughs> it's fine oh ta uh tally does not have a terrible towel i think i'm gonna have to get him one of those actually <laughs> what you'll find out what's a terrible towel so you'll you'll find out wait what <laughs> Oh man. Okay. Well, I think that's Just a save natural. It for Christmas. I think that's a natural place to leave it. Awesome. I think it is. Uh, guys, leave what it a that. great podcast that has been. So all we did was go through the ten point two five stuff, but um, amazing. What do you think of the five new uh, troll haircuts? Uh, hair colors. Oh, they're fine. They're not beards, are they? No. So. No. They're okay. <laughs> uh, one day. <laughs> Never yeah, mind. one day. What do, you think of, what do you think of the one new Draenei skin colour that was supposed to come a couple of patches ago anyway and didn't? Fine. I'll probably use it, but it's not red, is it? So... <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah, of course the Steelers are good. The Steelers are the best team. They're the best sports team the, after Swansea they City. They were good when I was a child, so right. they're good now. I am That's legitimately works, a Swansea City fan, but obviously my, you know, I'm a previous Swansea City season ticket holder, but... 
I my knowledge of American football is not great, and my knowledge of the Steelers is not great. But I have watched some games with your dad, and it's fun. It's I mean, you know, they don't actually play much, do they? They kind of stand around a lot. Oh, I mean, there's a lot of stopping and starting. Yeah. I still I've never taken the time to actually understand american football Well, because i sat down and there was like 10 but, minutes left on the clock and i was like oh sweet this will be finished in time for dinner like, and it no, went on for like another no, two no, hours no, it got, it got, like, yeah. they keep stop what they why yeah. the clock is not has time yeah. stopped what's going yeah. on yeah they do a lot of that it, it, it kind of like it it makes me a little ang- i like the momentum i like when things just go you know just, yeah. just yeah, yeah. non-stop and so um so i struggle with that a little bit but hey, to all of you who celebrate by watching American football, please enjoy the rest of the day today. Oh, uh, yeah. Enjoy the game. I don't even know what game's on. No, multiple well, just, games. Everyone's playing today, I think. Yeah, just big games. Enjoy uh, the game. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> and thank you for joining us for uh, the podcast. So great uh, to have so many of you watching live. And don't forget that uh, the VOD uh, goes up um, straight away on our main channel page. Uh, and will today because there's nothing we have to edit out of the fr- uh, at the start. Um, and from now on in, I think, you know, now we've got two episodes under our belt of chill it would be really nice to start getting some guests on as well to to get their opinions on things too Uh, which would be fantastic Um, uh, so you can watch this in the podcast section of our main channel Talius Mm -hmm. and Evertel um, on YouTube you can find the podcast on all of your podcast listening services as long as they are Apple Podcasts uh, and Amazon Music and Audible and Spotify Uh, otherwise you are bum out of luck son sorry Uh, and uh, we will see you at the same time same place next week we need to yeah. think of like some proper outro we do this. we need a what is that a sting or is that in the beginning yeah we need a uh, sting? no sting we need... is uh, yeah just, I, just we need the intro we need the outro we'll get this we'll get this down but um <laughs> maybe in the meantime like when when the video pops up maybe leave us a comment to let us know who you would like to in your dreams well to okay appear. so in, so i peculiar is definitely someone i want to have on as often as possible because she's always a great guest absolutely uh, from wowhead she's fantastic and mm-hmm. she, she said she might uh jesse cox would be nice well, i'd like to get jesse yeah, on yeah we've always um, wanted to do something with him we i feel like the first guest we have on is it gonna be dan olsen <laughs> <laughs> i reckon dan olsen would come on man dan, we're like yeah, buds now to, yeah yeah to totally i think again. he'd come on and uh, wow always good to hear dan olsen talking about stuff but no always. i think the first guest we should get on for old time's sake mm-hmm. should be garrett i was gonna say it has to be garrett it has uh, to be for garrett. those of you who don't know i used to do a wow podcast with garrett called wow killer uh and it lasted a couple of years and we both just kind of moved on to other things uh, and, and I, I understand that he is kind of vaguely following wow again now so yeah, it would actually good. be really really awesome It'd to kind really of uh, have him on and complete the circle yeah. as it were yeah would love to get noble on uh anyone all of those people yeah. all the people you're listing we will to. get on except mr gm man because you know <laughs> I'm joking. Stop it would be amazing it. to we have, have to, Mr. We have to get We have to get Garrett on because I have effectively <laughs> taken his place. Yeah, like, yeah, I have yeah, literally, you are my Garrett. I've literally taken Garrett's place. You're new Garrett. And and I, I, I want I to apologize. I can't even decide who's sexy. I want to <laughs> apologize to him, to his face. He has more hair than I do now. Yeah. So, um, hey, I reckon we'd have a shout at getting Bell. Oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if we asked, I think he'd, I I think think he'd come on. I, I'd love to chat with Preach. It'd be good to yeah, chat with him. Yeah, yeah, totally. All doing. of this stuff would be very, um, very Yeah, lo- loads of people that we would love to. Oh, love so to. many creators. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, one thing that has been amazing is since we, and we said this last time, but since we've been away, uh, uh, because of like the world situation and stuff, mm. and between last, last BlizzCon in 2019 and this year's BlizzCon, um, so many new creators have kind of yeah. joined the the scene the fray. and and the, like young creators with like so much energy and new ideas and opinions and stuff and it would be brilliant to to kind of like delve into that kind of rich fertile pool yeah of, of there's like, so many like really cool like super energized amazing uh like young new creators yeah and, and that we got to kind of say hello to at blizzcon but yeah yeah uh yeah that is the round table of my dreams happy uh, let's make it happen let's do it okay oh and if you should as well be fantastic anyway we're oh, just listing off everybody. names of cool people Hazel, right now okay. uh, anyway thank you for joining us today guys uh, and uh, we hope to see you again next week from me Taliesin and me Avatel until next time bye cheerio let's play the outro in front of a
live studio audience.